Bobino, what's Bobino? Um, Julio Ortiz is in the building. What's poppin'? We in the building, man. I know I came on, I saw it a little late, man, but we have, we here, we here. We here, you know what I'm saying? The wolves, are, the wolves are in the building. Feed the wolves, the wolves is in the building. What's Bobino? What's good, party people? There's a lot of things going on right now. We got the George Floyd case, the the, um, the jury selection. That's going on, you know what I'm saying? Um, jury selection to move forward and murder trial of Derek, despite going ongoing dispute over third charge in George Floyd's death. It's popping, it's popping, we in the building. Um, This is gonna be a test for time, you know what I'm saying? Because they threw a couple of charges out, they lowered some was popping and was popping and we in the building, we in the building. Um it's 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 this gonna be, you know, this is just the, the sec this, this is gonna be like the fourth, one of the fourth or fifth big biggest trials that we that we, that we remember was popping that we've had in our generation. We had the OJ. We had the um, Diablo, we had the Body King, and, and, and Jazz O'Brien was popping, was popping. And now we have this. Now, the thing with this one is, salute, and says Jones, salute, salute. The thing with this case is, it's going to be character versus evidence. Because the district attorney office is gonna only have to show at his character in this situation. And you know what I'm saying? And the defense is gonna have to prove the crime. Even though the crime is live on stage, in the video, whatever the case may be, we've seen this before with OJ, where they changed the trial from the evidence to the character of the police officers. So we have to be very mindful that these lawyers that 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 that's definitely on that's this the the district attorney office can really have to be on it, man. Cause those lawyers are, are gonna shoot for are, are gonna be shooting at George Floyd's character. And since they have a prior history, him and the officer, we don't know what the officer then dug up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the OJ case was serious. I, I was just I was telling somebody at the other day about the OJ case. I remember OJ was getting whipped on because that's when she, remember when Shapiro was representing him first. She was getting beat up on. They was hitting him with the mean mouths, chicken wing chops, and all that. And then Johnny, Johnny jumped in like, "Hold on, I'm gonna head the mission now." And when Johnny Conklin took control, it turned into days of my life. It went from OJ to the cop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It went from O.J. Simpson to the cops. I remember that shit. I remember it went, it went from O.J. to the cops. Once Johnny Conklin came in, because I guess the he was doing a good job, but he wasn't He wasn't doing what Johnny did. Johnny went in with the glove. Johnny went in with the racism. He went in with LAPD. He put LAPD on trial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All, that's all Johnny did was he put LAPD on trial. And that's how O.J. Simpson won that case. Now, do we think OJ did it? I don't know. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? But I tell you one thing, all the evidence pointed his direction and his movies did, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They made that happen, bro. So this is this is gonna be another trial where we're gonna really need a good grand jury, a good jury. For all, for anybody that's a minority. You ain't gotta be in my north, but anybody that sees, if anybody that, that understands about systematic racism, did not, you know what I'm saying? Just 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 take a chance, take your time out to be one of the most public public trials of the century. That that George Floyd turned into a worldwide movement where people began to see Black Lives Do Matter. Because not just in America. In other countries, dark skinned people of color, not just, you know, we got Brazilians that's dark skinned, we got Portuguese that's dark skinned, we got 
are, are being targeted because of their color of their skin. Even in Puerto Rico, you got the light Puerto Ricans and you got the dark skin Puerto Ricans. In Jamaica, you got the Jamaicans and you got the Africans. You know what I'm saying? That's you know what I'm saying. Um, it, it's waking people up. It woke people up, man. Like damn. Cause now because of cameras, that yeah, cash was popping. Because of cameras, they're able to see what's going on. But even with that, we cannot think that it's a slam dunk. We we seen what happened with Mr. Gardner. We seen what happened. They start throwing character in play. They start throwing the character. They get the character looks to replace you. And and I'm gonna tell you something, man. One thing I learned from just reading history books, man. Propaganda sells, right? For four years, the news was pushing something about a president. One thing, propaganda sells right now. To our knowledge, neo-Nazis don't like African-Americans. A couple other groups, but they don't like us, right? So now Jesse Owens wins the Olympics and they on camera, they're treating him like a king because at that time in America, African-American in the South had to sleep we went to a hotel in the basement. Colored bathrooms. They didn't have a right to vote. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what are we gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna treat you like a king. We're gonna show you in these five-star restaurants. We're gonna show you in a five-star hotel. We're gonna even let you ride in the front of the bus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is what Hitler Germany did. Propaganda. So what happens is it puts us. It puts us on the forefront looking crazy. And I was like, how come, yes, you see that we're the worst people in the world, but we let this African-American who defeated us, who defeated us in the Olympics. Exactly. Propaganda. So we have to look beyond the propaganda. In our culture, propaganda has soon, has, has won. What I mean by that has won, has won the fight is, I should that's your character. You, you might, yeah, so it might be propaganda. Yo, please don't call me, man. It might be a lot of propaganda, but it works. The cow, like, like they said, the only object they have is, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the only, the only lean they have is that. That be shout out to my man Fatso Brent, you know what I'm saying? That be shoot the Fatso, you know what I'm saying? It's that coming at his character. Because the only thing he did was it's over twenty dollars. Something went over twenty dollars and the situation went sour and the cop was over aggressive on him. This 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 is a teaching moment. You know what I'm saying? Um there's a generation of guys that's like thirty years old. This is no this is not freestyling. I don't know about New York City, but it definitely definitely in this Midwest I noticed when I ask people about yo, you seem to do the right thing. And they look at me like I'm crazy. And I'd be like, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've seen this in Do the Right Thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Remember Do the Right Thing, Radio Raheem, they threw the, 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 the brick with the fire. And the, that Do the Right Thing happened in one shot last year <laughs> during the George Floyd riots. You know what I'm saying? I think Al Sharpton, I like to salute Al Sharpton because I think Al Sharpton, he took a step back. He, 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 you know what I'm saying? He let it play out because he didn't want to become a Al Sharpton show because what happens, the media automatically tears at his character. And, they, and they're still bringing up when this good causes to Rhonda Brawley. They're still bringing her up. I don't know why. 40 years later, these guys are still bringing together to Rhonda Brawley and because of that to Rhonda Brawley, a cop killed himself and boom. That's why I tell you, go watch um, do the right thing. It has a lot of good messages in it. It picks up a lot of stories that have happened. When you see Fight the Power, the original video, you see Tawana Brawley in the video. That was for real. Um, when that Howard Beach situation happened in Queens, remember that Howard Beach? I'm not going to lie to you, even though, even though you know it's, it's tough with race relations, those Italian mothers was bringing their kids to that police station. Like, hold on, I know, boom, I know you ain't do that. Change can happen, and I'm seeing it every day. I see it every day. There's some people that are stuck in their Republican ways or whatever ways they're stuck in, and you got some people that 
When I see white women, when I see the Caucasians with Black Lives Matter, what they're doing is they're educating their kids that black people matter also. So even though you may only have one African-American friend, if you're in a position of power, you won't judge them off of characteristics that you read on the news. You understand what I'm saying? Because we do it to each other all day. We judge each other all day. And somebody come to me right now and ask me, man, he a clown, he a bozo. Yo, I say all the worst things about the person so that, oh, boy, I ain't going to deal with him. Let me tell you that message in mind. I said, nah, you, you really cool. Them dudes around the block, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, God, not my block, but, you know, in my travel. So I understand character means a lot when it means for, for certain things. So this trial is going to be this is something to watch with your kids, man. Because this is going to be real. We watch O.J. Simpson. Even dudes on the block will go home and waste five hours watching this O.J. Simpson trial on NBC. NBC made billions of dollars. Rodney King rocks. That was crazy. They had, listen, they was beating Rodney King with the, on the videotape. Hit him a thousand times. Rest in peace, Rodney King. And they still found a way not to really convict them cops. They had to burn L.A. down. <laughs> L.A. was getting torn up. Not talking about the 69 riots. Talking about the 9, what's that, 9 3 riots? Am I right? I don't know what. I think that was 9 3 or 9 2, one of those two. You know what I'm saying? It was burning. It's, and then when you actually see the documentaries on the Rodney King riots, yo, they were shooting out with them, with, with them Asian supermarkets. It was gunning. It, 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 was, it, it, it was for real. But what came out of that was, I believe one of the first. It was a lot of blood and crypt peace treaties. A lot of peace, a lot of crypt and crypt peace treaties came out of that a little bit. There's a book on that called The Uprising. Get the book The Uprising. It mentions the, the how they put together the blood and crypt truce during the Latin King, during the uh, Rodney King riots. Um, the early 90s was it very revolutionary? Yes, it was a new revolutionary movement. You know what I'm saying? We had Tupac who was trying to do thug life. We had, um, yeah, thug life, Tupac was really trying to do some thug life where you no know, revolutionaries, you know what I'm saying? That's a new generation of revolutionaries. If you remember, um, um, it was Tupac, you know what I'm saying? Now, we had good movies that was, you know, showing us the, you know, when we seen Malcolm X from Spike Lee, that was educational, right? Then when we seen Black Panther from Malcolm X from, from Spike Lee, that was also educational. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it was, I think drugs, the, the drug that was tore, tore down, slowed up, of a, I would say from 86 to at least 2000 the drug game slowed up the culture. Um, just mass incarceration, instead of, instead of going to school, I'm gonna hug the block. It, 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 was, it, was, it was insane. Um, and, that, and, and while we was doing this, policing became more militant. Definitely after the first World Trade Center, but then the second one, they became more militant, so now, they're, they're, they're recruiting guys from the backwoods of Idaho to become cops at NYPD or cops wherever they are. So now these guys who already have their views, they come from these rural areas and they bring them into the hood. They already like, remember these guys already, they hunters, these dudes, these dudes go there. When's the last time you went deer hunting? When's the last time you and the homie said, yo, let's bump up in the truck and go. I got my daylight season license. We're going in the woods, we're going hunting. These dudes Hunts for game. So now you got a bunch of people you done sent to war, and they, they're telling them your job is to fight crime. <laughs> them. They look at us as game. So when we see what we see, we'll think about this. You can't change the system if you got the same police, police chief or the police captain in these precincts. You can't change it. It has to change within, right, piece by piece, you know what I'm saying? And it's not really a black and white thing. That's what's a racist sensitive because you have some African-Americans that's so stuck on the money part of the game. Well, I'm black, I got money, you don't have money, so I look at you totally different. You know what I'm saying? You're not my kind of black. I, I, I've been up north with CEOs that said, nah, I'm not African-American, I'm Canadian. I, I bet you a bunch of y'all done met them before. Like, nah, I'm not, because they see that in these jails, most of them is African-Americans and Latinos, you know what I'm saying? 
this is why they have to change the face of the game. This, this might you this that this George Floyd thing has united corporate America, where corporate America is being more sensitive. They're waking up. It's a new, it's a newer breed of kids. The, the, the kids is forty years old now. They're like, nah, son, I wanna. Uh, we gotta be. We have, we have to. We have to give at least. A, like we may not get reparations, but if you work for some of these companies, you're getting reparations. More doors is opening now. They're hiring. They're they're they're, they're recruiting more African American managers for certain departments. You know what I'm saying? They're they they're, they're giving more. They're putting more cottage loans in in in, in, in for African Americans. So. You gotta pay attention to this and, and just, just stay united. You know what I'm saying? We have to stay united on a united front. This case is gonna pay attention and let your kids see this. This is systematic. This is the things of educating your kids about the country that they're in. They're gonna watch the trial that the, the, the DA is gonna go at these guys, not, not the DA, but the lawyers are gonna be shooting at this man's character. What he was, who he is. And it doesn't, listen, we've seen it with Rodney King. Um, Every garden mother said it best. Don't be, don't be fooled. They, they'll come out his character. And the character of sometimes, remember, you have the wrong type of jury in there, right? Sometimes it's the jury that supersedes your intelligence. You be thinking, ah, what is jury? He's from the rural areas. Or this jury, he support cops. Or this jury, it's liberal but conservative. Nobody really tell you who they really are. So you got somebody who may be sitting on the jury like, you know what? I don't like Pete. I, don't, I, 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 I think he did it. Or I think he's. I think he was in the wrong. I think he said because a lot of people believe that you should be submissive to law enforcement. That's just the belief of certain taxpayers that don't understand about law enforcement. This is, this is God on the truth. You know what I'm saying? You got some people who believe that we're supposed to be submissive when they jump out on us to hop our boards, you sit up, put your hand against the wall. It is what it is. So we got to be on point. So just pay attention to this George Floyd situation and what he might get convicted of. Now, now, now this is going to be a fight against the actual crime, physical evidence, because we've seen it before. Rodney King, Eric Gardner. We've seen it. We've seen it. It's not, it's, this, is, this, this isn't a black and white thing now. This is a law thing. This is a system thing. Let's see how the system play out. It's not about black and white right now. This is, this is, this is, this is about the laws and how these guys are going to play the law. Let me tell you something. I sat at somebody's trial before, right? And I witnessed going to a trial, watching somebody go to trial. I wanted to support my man at the trial. Them DAs put a show on. A good DA puts a classical show on. They have you like, I remember the DA, his name was Greenberg. I forgot his first name. He was, a, he was the DA before David Sauls in Albany, New York. He's the one that convicted my man. He went and had the jury's crime. He said, look, this man right here was bringing, they had, they had that, the, the, the photo of all the drugs. They separated each crack bottle. bottle. It was like a hundred bottles, like two, three hundred bottles all on the board. This man right here was gonna bring these drugs into our, into your communities to affect some of your kids that's probably addicted to this. This man right here, this lady looked at my man and started crying. I said, oh God, this ain't even for a homicide. I knew, even, yo, even his lawyer wrote after that appeal. You know when, when, it, when, when the DA get to say is the last words, the closing arguments, the closing arguments was like, I would have given him an Oscar for that. He got that 8 to 30, 25. He was like, this man right here, my man born, you know what I'm saying? I heard he home now, Jefferson Super Born, Southside, Liberty Ave, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Jeffrey, you know what I'm saying? My man born from Queens. He did, he did it, he did it though. I'm not gonna go into the whole case that I had to trial, because I'm not into, I'm not slandering names to get, I'm not doing all that, you know what I'm saying? But I, I just like to say, all his code, he's kept it a buck. You know what I'm saying? Deputy Fat J was popping. Harlem, y'all know who Fat J is. His popper was popping. Harlem Wealth, y'all know who Fat J is. He went with Brucey B. He been running with Brucey B. Y'all see him in Albany, tell me some deep black shit was up. He's, he went to jail for that. He was, he was a part of that case. He went to jail for that, you know what I'm saying? But my man, he went to go to trial. The DA sold the best package in the world. I seen it. So I so by me physically being sitting in the courtroom and watching people reaction, I'm like, yo, this trial thing is serious, man. You get a good DA up there, an experienced DA. And Greenberg was actually the DA of Albany. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
of Albany County. So he took the case. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't just like a regular DA. He was actually the DA of Albany County. So you got the top notch. This, this, this was like law and order. I was like, yo, this is real, man. And if you don't have a good lawyer, my man didn't have a good lawyer. He had a legal way. The legal way, though, he ain't kicking the lingo. He just like, yo, he wrote a, he wrote a pill on the paper. We're going to have to pill this one. My man born did his own 8 and 35 and came home. He said, I fought that pill one. The only time you, the only time they rush your pill, unless you got 11 people behind you that got some money. If you ain't got nobody got no money, your pill takes a little bit longer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta have like you gotta have money in the stash already. Like yo, as soon as I blow, get the get that get, get him on get him on retainer. Cause a lot of times when you plead out, they I don't know what they do now, but I know for the state if you plead out, they um take away your right to appeal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless you could finagle something and go my arrest was 100 percent illegal, but that still that takes money. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times for all your fools that's in the street, you better keep some appeal money somewhere in the stash. Because if you don't keep no appeal money in the stash, that's why a lot of dudes be sitting up no scratching their heads. They, they have good appeals, but you got no money for appeal lawyers. You now you got to reach out to these societies that uh, stand up for you. Like, oh, here go the appeal. Like, salute to those three guys that just got, after 24 years, oh, they got acquitted. They just got, you know, acquitted of murder. Murder an ex cop and a guy in a tick cash spot in, in Queens. Shout, shout out to them dudes, man. They, they free, but it took them 24 years to do it. But, boom, now they're going to get like 20 million. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wrongful convictions. Remember the thing in the Brooklyn DA office? These are conversations other than the gang and that, that we got to have with people, man. You got to have your money right. Lawyer money, appeal money. God forbid you in the street. Nobody has that. So, what happens is you wind up fighting the case, fighting the case, because you really know what you're doing. So you got to play with a jailhouse lawyer that, that really knows his paperwork. But you still need money to do that. You still need cigarettes. You still need. You still need. You know what I'm saying? You, you still need. You know what I'm saying? You still need. You still need. Bread. You still need bread. And it's funny, man, because living in Albany, I realized Albany's the capital. Albany's, Albany's the capital. Capital of New York State. That's the capital. So you see the Albany, the builders. You mingle with them. I seen David Patterson when he was just a regular congressman or senator going to the caucus. You remember in the Albany, New York, they had this thing called the caucus, the Black and Latino caucus, where all the politicians come up. My cousin... My cousin used to be a um, party promoter, so he, he goes to all that too. Jeff, shout out to my cousin, Passion of Heart, Hype Entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man, Lamel, SNL Productions, you know what I'm saying? When don't say these are the dudes that was around, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yo, it was dope, man. It was a dope time, right? It was a dope time. I met, I just got to see, I, I, I went to a lot of conventions. My man, right? A good friend of mine. That's what I'm saying. My good friend of mine's. He had a plug with the state to do at one point that um, all their posters, business cards, their flyers, they give him like thirty, forty thousand for that. Just just for that weekend, he'll do all the all the arts and crafts. You know, all the young, you know what I'm shout out to Young Wise, it's a fact. Shout out to Young Wise. Shout out to DJ Biz. Shout out to DJ Toast. Shout out to DJ um, Chris Cool. Shout out to DJ Air Look. Shout out to um. Shit, this fool name, man. Um, that be to my man Gibby, you know what I'm saying? Mike Gibby. Ha. DJ Crush, Swift, you know what I'm saying? Just being around, moving around the culture. See, just, whenever you go to a town, you move it around the culture. But this is what Albany, New York was. Albany, New York is, is the state capital. That's, what, I, that's one thing nobody never talk about, the appeal money. You might even get bamboozled. You might even get bamboozled into um uh oh hold on hold on my man is running for um councilman downtown um Decky Lawson that's my guy me and him played JV football that's how real this is I'm not changing this topic but this is real we played JV football he's from Albany downtown shout, shout out to the whole downtown South End we used you know what I'm saying we used to play um yeah yeah yo 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 tell Crush Z Black set what up 
You know what I'm saying? Tell Quick, yo, Ziki Black said, what's up, man? That's my guy. Tell him Ziki Black said, what's up? He did a party for me at this Connected Boys Club one time. We were doing it for these kids. Me, him, and my man, D Mac. We had donated our time to do a kids' talent show at the Boys Club and Connected You on Craig Street. So, you know, we just we had a plan and it worked out. We did it for the kids. Yeah, yeah, I went to school with Ducky, back to Ducky. So, Ducky, we played with, when I first came to Albany, I played for JV football and I played for Albany High. Me and Ducky been friends since 1989. He ain't from New York, he's from Albany. He used to sing with a group called Ashanti, Ashanti, something like that. He was just singing. He's the man, he's the basketball coach, the head basketball coach last I knew for Albany High, for the female basketball squad. I think he had a chip. This is a guy I played, I played basketball with. A guy I played basketball, a guy I played JV football with. My man Ducky Lawson, boom. And then my man, the homie brother, he owned that barbershop, he said Onyx, my man, my man Williams, you know what I'm saying? I forgot his first name, I forget his first name, but you know what I'm talking about. The cat, Larry brother, Larry's brother. He's running for councilman also, salute to him. He's done a lot for the 518, you know what I'm saying? He got the barbershop, he got the barbershop, he part of the MC club, he used to throw mad parties in um, Sneaky Peace, other places, he was a big promoter in the 90s, definitely 2000s, late 90s, 2000s, he was killing them, you know what I'm saying? My man, um, what's his name, Trigger, Tigger, Trigger, well, my man, my man Larry Brother, you know, Central Ave, yeah, he's running for, you know, so, so, so go support him, these are my people, my, they good guys, you know what I'm saying, Larry's brother, the cab driver, the homie, you know what I'm saying? Definitely go support him, man, you know what I'm saying, definitely go support, the, you know what I'm saying, they're doing it for the people, the Robinsons, those are my people. You know what I'm saying? Those are, those are my people's like, you know, Shine Robinson and you know, they good people too. They, you know, old bar and all them. They, they politicians also. Yeah, yeah, Larry the Cab Driver, his brother. I forgot what they call his brother, man, but his brother, his brother is running for um politics right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that bad, my man. Tell, you tell Lavi, yo, Zeke Black said what's up. He'll tell you a story. Yo, one time he was in the cab, he ain't gonna change the story. Some shit out, you know what I'm saying? That, that, I ain't gonna front. Larry one time, uptown and downtown, had the issues, but Larry's one of the first ones to really get the homies that was on Lock and Arms to be in tune with, the, the, the back then it was the BGs and the OGKs that was downtown, that's when Ron C was alive, rest in peace Ron C, you know what I'm saying, and he's the biggest downtown to hang out with them, we were getting intermingled with them, in, in a peaceful manner, you know what I'm saying, before they was OGK, they was BG, you know what I'm saying, well, whatever they was, you know what I'm saying, but you know, rest in peace my man Ty Nitty, you know what I'm saying, um, yeah, back to the revolution. So, let's be, let's keep, let's stay in tune in, with educating our people. Louis, Louis, that's his name, Louis. Louis. Tell, you know what I'm saying, Louis, that's my man, the barber. That's Larry's brother, Louis. Oh, you're Black Mafia, you was with cutting all of them, with, with um, Al G and all of them. That situation happened with Cut. Rest in peace, Cut. Yeah, that black gangster. My man Capone was a part of that too. Man Capone and um, Shafiq and all them Fiki, Fee Fiki. They was all part of that. That movement. I remember that. Nine two. The Black Mafia. That's a fact. Shout out to my man Kevin Spice and all of them. Man, they wasn't the black. My peanut and all that. You know what I'm saying? You see, this, the world is small. This world is small, party people. But. Back to the mojo, you know what I'm saying? Definitely salute to you, bro, for, for the check-in. And these people, these are good people to bring back to memories, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. That shit ever with cut and all that, yeah. Al G up north was a weird story. I heard, I hope, I think for real about to come home. This is what I'm saying. Albany was a, Albany was a, um, a hub, an out-of-town hub. Just like Buff, not Buffalo, but like Watertown might have been or... Any Poughkeepsie, Kingston, Dutchess County, you know, you can't call why you out of town because why your nigga, why your cats is like Bronx cats, you know what I'm saying? That be shout out to Yonkers, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, my man Esten, Essence. But um, so we have to get in tune with these trials, man, and we have to look at ourselves and go. We have to find ourselves to put our put ourselves in position to be on these grand on these juries, on these grand juries. We gotta be the ones that have a voice in these juries. The reason why we don't, because we got these morals that I can't do this and I can't do that, man. Y'all got be that's the only way it's gonna stop, man. That's you know what I'm saying? It's the only way it's gonna stop. You know what I'm saying? We got people that's 
in place now that's that, that's in position that's really with the they that she when I see when I where I live at and it's a high end you know liberal area probably and I walk around and see ten houses with Black Lives Matter man that make I, that's heartfelt man because at least you may not understand but you care. You under you, you at some point you do understand. You understand what's you, you understand what's going on. So no you know I'm saying salute to George Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Let's support that. Pay attention to that. Like we paid attention to OJ, we paid attention to um Rodney King tribe. Remember the Rodney King tribe? And a lot of people may not even know, but Aaron there around that time became the um the one of the youngest heads of the urban league. We're not talking about what happened to him afterwards, but when he he was a part of that making peace with the Bloods and Crips. He brought them to New York with the no the, the, the with the Nation of Islam. You know what I'm saying? I remember that. Get the book to Uprising. You're gonna be like, Aaron Deer? You know what I'm saying? Aaron Deer was one of the youngest members of the Urban League before he got caught, whatever he got caught up in 10 years later. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, you know what I'm saying? But you know, he was he played a part to trying to save some lives. Physically. Like, he really went to L.A. and got with some bloods and crypt and brought them to New York, had them on the trains. You read the uprise and you see it. Oh, wow, that's what Zeke was talking about. Because they all started getting in tune through because of Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was able to link a lot of guys together. Because before Mike Tyson got away, started messing with Leon Horn and um, and the other guy, his man, that was Team Tyson. We talking about Team Tyson when he brought the mansion, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's what that's we trying to tell you. Dude, get the, get the book of Uprising. And don't get it because they got bloods and crypts in it. Read about the, Because it's really about the peace treaty and what led up to the peace treaty and what they was doing to make peace between the bloods and crypts at that time because of the Rodney King riots. Rodney King riots brought a lot of dudes together in L.A. You see what I'm saying? Um, so stay, so, 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 so let's stay in tune with that. Now, um... I want to say on that topic too long. There's another topic I have. I have I had on the thumbnail. There's a situation with Oprah interviewed the princess. I mean, I like the princess, but you know. Hold on. Let me, let me say it right because we got to say it right. We got to say things right. You know what I'm saying? Hold on a second. You know, I got to salute the wife. Salute the Southern Bell, man. Salute the Southern Bell. So salute the Southern Bell, man, because she invested in this. You know what I'm saying? When you invest in something, we're just we're just we're just doing the best we can under these strenuous times. You know what I'm saying? Hold on a second. Now there was something that was deep, right? Um, Mega and Harry from the you know the the England royalty, the royal crown. They was interviewed by Oprah Winfrey because they left the crown to be civilians. They left that life. They left life of privilege to be free. Um, behind closed doors, you know what I'm saying? Behind closed doors, there was there's still, you know, got to think about this, you know, England has years of years of, you know, they was into the slave trade before. You know, they was heavy in the trade. We had three had the great empires, right? We had we had we had France, the French Empire, we had the um Spain Empire. You know, the Spaniards, according to them, they discovered Jamaica. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Because of Columbus. According to him, he discovered the land where people wanted. But we had these travelers in the British Empire, like I said, the French Empire, the the you know, the ones that I know about for that. I'm pretty sure the Russians had their empire, the Certain new areas had 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 their movements, but she she moved into royalty. Where think about it, where she got, you know, she's having a baby, and, and they're saying to her like, to him, like, I hope the baby don't come out dark. Like you don't want that to be the picture of the New England. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But England has colonized so many islands and lands of dark people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got dark people like Jamaica. They're, you know what I'm saying? Certain parts of Canada, like Mont like like Toronto. You know what I'm saying? They have a whole a large so 
she's speaking on this, and he's speaking on this, man. And I'm, I'm gonna say, man, it's, it's just, it's just, you know, it's history, man. It's just history, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I guess they they, 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 they couldn't live around it. They couldn't be amongst that, you know what I'm saying? Every age group, you got some people that just want to be free. Not not saying his brother don't want to be free, but he just want to be free. And he took a chance in marrying something that was totally opposite of the crown. And I think, you know what I'm saying? When you marry something into that's that that's that's totally opposite of the vision of the future of the crown, it changes everything in the math, man. And and, and again, we got a bunch of old people that still stuck with their ways. See that old generation that that of, of hate and racism, they're still around, man. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're 80 years old. They're 90 years old. They're 100 years old. They're 75 years old. The ones that want to hold on to their hate, they never let the hate go. They still believe that we should be segregated. Now, on a worldwide basis, we're not just talking about, but they're speaking from a worldwide vision. Because remember, England has a lot of colonies. You know what I'm saying? They have a lot of influence because of the empire generations. Remember, Spaniards went one way, France went another way. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got people that speak French in Haiti, right? Because the French was there. And, and it's crazy because one of the first islands to gain an independence from colonization in the Caribbean was the Haitians. But they don't get no, only thing that happens with Haiti is they get all the bad slack. But they was one of the first ones, man. That's why you gotta do your history and read about stuff, man, and, and just do this, man. A, a lot of racism dealt with power taking over. A lot of racism was dealt off of power and taking over. And we're gonna be in place and not them. We're gonna put ourselves in place and not them. A lot, a lot of this stuff, man, because as, we, as because as we're reading more and just learning more, it's everybody don't hate each other, man. Let's 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 stay united somewhere. How do we change? You know what I'm saying? So now we're talking about that, and that was deep because Oprah, you know, Oprah always get that triple platinum interview. And I'm surprised I'm doing this, but I have to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know why? I tried something, right? I'm going to tell you an experiment I tried. And that's why I'm going to tell you this is, this is deep. I lived in Albany County, right? So my daughter was born. I was like, you know what, man? I don't have enough money. Me, me and her mother didn't make enough money to send her to Catholic school. To send her to St. James. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have enough money to send her to a, a, a private school. So I said, we have to move somewhere where there's a decent school district. All these school districts are all right, but it's not what you want to be unless you live. I don't know where you're going to live at because I've never seen it. Unless you live on New Scotland Avenue. So, this is the plan I came up with. I said, yo. I, I, I said, listen, let's move, to, let's move somewhere for the school district. So this is, this is, this is a fact. We pulled, she signed up for housing in Cohoes, Cohoes, New York, up the hill. She signed up for the projects. They mailed back. I caught the letter and I signed off on it with some information. Who knows? They accepted us. We moved in. So my daughter, even though Cohoes downtown part might look like the slums, but up the hill going towards Latham, there's money up there. The school district, we're talking about early 2000s. It's good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now my daughter, she's in the classroom with, with Asians, whites, and she's getting a great free, this is a free education that's compared to a Catholic school education, but it wasn't about so much about the education, it was about the diversity. Her, her learning about other cultures in this school. And yo, my daughter right now is a sophomore in college. She was on the honor roll all through high school. She's about to be a, she's about to be a junior next year. It worked. And one thing that my daughter sees a bigger world than what I see. Because when, when I was younger, I didn't see a bigger world. When I seen a bigger world is when I moved downtown Manhattan. When my mother moved to 98th Street. That's when I began to see that everything that's light of a lighter shade don't look at us funny. Because we had friends of a lighter shade that was cool with us, that moved like us, that talked like us. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it, it made me see things different. Peace, peace, Kinko. You know what I'm saying? And that's, and that's what I did for my daughter. It was an experiment. So I'm telling you from experience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
I'm telling you from experience. My daughter went to Cohoes Elementary. When time she went, when her mother decided to move back to the Albany School District, my daughter was on the honor roll. So my daughter was on the honor roll since junior high. She went to Hackett Junior High School. You know where Hackett's at. She went to Hackett Junior High School. When she graduated, she got like four good awards, plus the highest grade average. She had one of the highest grade averages in the school. <laughs> because now you bring her to a, a school district that's not as advanced as Cajos. Like I told you, I couldn't, we couldn't afford Catholic school, but one thing that we could afford is we just move over here and it's a good school district. I would have moved to Latham. Latham has an even better school district. I got to pay a little bit more for rent, but what happened? We got into housing. And it worked. The one time that housing in my, in, my, in my older age ever benefited me, the one time I could say that housing did me justice. We have to expose our children to other cultural races. It's better prepares them for the world, good, bad, and ugly. That is a fact. Put my daughter in the room of vultures, and she knew how to handle them because she went to school with them. These were her friends. She goes to a state university. She's had to go to a senior school. She's doing great for herself. But you understand what I'm saying? This is a girl who, I, if I post a picture, yo, she hang out. Smart people hang out with smart people. It's crazy. The same crew that she went to school in junior high school, right? They all went to Albany High together when they graduated. This same clique stood together the whole four years. They all got, they all got scholarships and all type of going to this school and that school and that school and boom, boom, boom. She stood with the same clique. Because you know what happens? The real ones, like, like, certain, like, like you know what I mean? They don't look, they look at them like, oh, they want to be smart. It doesn't make no sense, but real ones look at smart people like they're crazy, right? That makes no sense. I'm a real one. They nothing like us. But the ones that we see nothing like that, they're the ones getting the scholarships. They're the ones getting the, the good school offers. Okay, we'll pay for some of your tuition to go to NYU. Those are the ones that's being prepared for the future. While the real ones, like some of us, as we thought, are being pushed to the back. So the reason why, but, but this has to do with my daughter's situation is, with, with the Megan situation is, she had to leave the crown to raise her child to be diverse with the world, man. And not just look, and not just feel because you have an inch of African American, there's going to be this, this, this stigma, this, this look at you within the crown. You know what I'm saying? The crown hasn't outgrown that yet. Remember, the Queen of England, like 100 years old. Anything around her is 60, 70. You know what I'm saying? They all got them same beliefs. You know what I'm saying? If you ever watch the BBC and look at the parliament, how many African Americans you see in there? You know what I'm saying? It's just, so it's, it, they still, they got their ways. You know what I'm saying? Even though the monarchy doesn't control nothing, the monarchy is still a, a face figure for the country. It still means something. The, mon the monarchy is very rich because they got money and everything. Lands, they own hotels. You'd be surprised what they got their money in, you know what I'm saying? This is why the monarchy got so much money. At the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church got stock in all the major companies. Plus, they get free, all these donations, and everything is tax exempt, and ha, ah, you have a, this is how you create a business, through God, you know what I'm saying? But back to the story. If you think I'm wrong, that's what I want you to do. Do your own Googling and figure this out. That's why I said there's nothing wrong with moving away. There's nothing wrong with it. They got, what they call it, travelers? Travelers, traveler, traveler, the travelers, whatever that is. You can go to any, some cities, and they got programs that, organizations that set up people that want to, you know, that, that's homeless. You know we live on the jet bags. Come on, babes, let's get the socks, T-shirts, five outfits. We're going to Cincinnati. You can get some placement, you know, boom, 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 services start coming, you get a job, listen, you know, any job, Marple Floors, McDonald's, anything to get in nowadays because of COVID and Black Lives Matter, they're trying to pay dudes $15 an hour. Now, to work at Walmart ain't a bad thing, right? You can work at Sam's Club and get $15 an hour stocking shelves. You got dudes that work in New York City, they ain't getting $15 an hour. So we have to, you know what I'm saying? We have to get into the planet. We have to, you know what I'm saying? If you want, if you want success, you have to remove yourself. 
Maybe what we think is success is, is what's keeping us down. I don't know, bro. Buck, Buck. I'm keep my oh, shout, shout out to Buck. Shout out to the whole Lehman, the, the, the whole Lehman crew. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to anything in Lehman, man. I don't know, bro. Because mass incarceration was separating us from our realities. You understand what I'm saying? Jail was destroying us. Think about this, right? You removed yourself and went down south, haven't been back to jail, family man, living in the house, successful. And your kids are on the right path. That might not happen in Harlem, bro. Definitely, you know what I'm saying? Because, because while we was gone, there was a new trend. A new trend that was picking up. And it's not that it became trendy because it was a jail thing. It was trendy because... Exactly. Those are strange words right there. Kent and Duke and boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Mass incarceration is what took us away, bro. But then the new trend was that new hip-hop, DMX, Get At Me Dog, LOX. You know what I'm saying? If you was, if I wasn't a chef up north, I'd have got left up north, even though she ain't never been up north. You know what I'm saying? So they're promoting this new sound this, of the streets. You know, prodigy, yellow back niggas. What's yellow back mean? What's that shit the bloods be saying? That's that blood shit, yellow back, yada, yada, yada. They start putting it with the music. So now these young boys, they growing up going, yeah, I want to be like, da, da, da. Blood of my blood, yo, I'm going to take an oath. They don't even know why they banging. But what came out of that was a, a, a message of hate. Well, this gang, this gang that you're about to join, oh, we got beef with Puerto Ricans because the Puerto Ricans are oppressing them. That's the best way to do it. We reinvented ourselves, man. Because it ain't where you from, it's definitely where you at. If you don't realize that, you know what I'm saying? If it ain't where you from, it's where you at. Now that Julio Ortiz is older, he's in the neighborhood, he's seeing the neighborhood change. Across the street, they had a Mexican Chinese restaurant. That wasn't over there back in the days. You go down there here, you got restaurants. You got, you got, you go towards on Third Street, it's crazy. Debbie shout out to my man Ty Bless. You got time, man. Go follow the Bless ones. His name is Ty Bless. Follow him on um Facebook. He does great. He just he, he's a follower. He's a part of the, you know, got his he got his hip hop, freestyle music stuff. That's my guy, man. He's running with K7 when K7 was K7. Even when K7 was on Hot 97, he was running with him. Um, he did a couple of great songs with them. He's a part of K7, you know what I'm saying? He's a part of that whole K7 movement. Shout out to K7, you know what I'm saying? But he's a part of it. My man Todd Blush. You get some time. If you like freestyle music, you like house music, he, he, he raps also. Check him out, man. And my man MDW, my man Moe's for my projects, you know what I'm saying? Check him out on Facebook, too. If you like freestyle, he plays old school hip-hop. He has a, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? He has some hot joints, you know what I'm saying? From Spanish Harlem, man. I support my, like I told you, it ain't, what, it ain't what you do in somebody's face, it's what you do behind their back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 definitely. You know what I'm saying? And that's where we at, man. We're talking about the time, man. I mean, you know, I love my people, man. I've seen things in my lifetime that were surprising. Yo, Buck, this is a great dialogue we having right now. Do I think my daughter would have been where she at now? Probably not, because I'd have been in jail, and I'd have had a baby mother that was outside, because I was outside, you know what I'm saying? And she probably would have met the new generation that was coming out. Not new, but was new to the streets. Remember, when we left, start going to jail, then you come home, there's bandanas now. Now there's more or less now. Now there's form better. Now there's hold a gun. It was crazy, exactly. It was a different game. My man Julio. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's my guy. Hold on. He just said NYCHA. And that's deep what he said right there. You know what I'm saying? I remember my man. I don't know if that's... My man should be with Spanky. My guy. He was straight out of Puerto Rico. I swear to you. He knew no English. This nigga knew no, this nigga knew no English. He learned his English 
fuck messing with us. Hanging out with us. It's no lie. I, I, he might know what I'm talking about. Son works for house. He works, I mean, he worked on Washington Projects. He worked on Washington Projects. When we first met him in 88, 89, he just told nothing but Spanish. You know what I'm saying? All the, ah, da, 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 da. He's like, yo, come on. Boop, boop, boop. After a while, he knew our English. He started talking English to us. Like, oh, yeah, you're well, Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. He knew a little bit, but everything else he learned, man, just hanging out with us, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, look, he had a plan. While we was on the block catching BNC felonies, going out of town, being on the run, he got a job with New York City Housing Authority. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You hear me? The last time I seen him, he was doing the garbage thing. This is crazy. But I made sense what housing doing, but he was doing the garbage thing. That's growth and development. You know what I'm saying? Because he has a good enough job where he don't have to live in the neighborhood. He can actually move to um, Putnam County or some parts of Queens and just travel to work. My states is different, man. Y'all assume that everybody hustled back in the days. I don't know why. Just because you on the block. We was for the block. FTB for the block. We wasn't FTB, but we was for the block. So even though he ain't hustle, we drank together on a Friday night. You know what I'm saying? We drank some Bacardi or some cheap vodka. Not the Georgie. We was doing a little smand off back then. The Georgie ever was a little different. That was the dirty bloods and all that. But east side to them niggas. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, you know what I'm saying? Killer and them niggas. Them niggas ain't dirty bloods though, but killer. You know the young boys, man. No killer. Talk and all of them, you know what I'm saying? They they different generation. You know what I'm They're good dudes though, good dudes from the neighborhood, man. But the streets began to begins to take over. The popularity of joining gangs. Shout out to my man Diddy. You know what I'm saying? My man Pierre. One day me and Pierre was arguing about me calling him Diddy. But you know what? Shout out to Diddy. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy, man. Free Diddy, you know what I'm saying? Good dude, man. He's just, but this is the younger generation. They got caught up in the gang culture. We watch this. They went from being good fellas to bloods. <laughs> but shout out to the good fellas, Quad brought it back with the motorcycle club. You understand what I'm saying? Yo, I swear to God, man, the game changed. We seen good households turn into gang houses. We seen it. We watched baby mothers mess with the big homie or where the, the street big homie and hey, our house became the spot and then they find two, three guns and kids is going to foster care. We seen that. So this is why it's okay to get away. It's okay to bring your kids. If you can't afford Catholic school, move into a neighborhood that has a good school district. You don't got to be rich for that. You don't got to be rich for that. The only time that housing did me justice legally as an adult, I never, you know what I'm saying, was that. The whole purpose of moving to holes was my daughter to get that grade A education. And yo, bro, I swear to God for you, it works. I'm telling you from experience, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I used to work at night and babysit my daughter in the daytime and take my stepdaughter to school. That's how real I stuck with my plan. Now he got, oh, your nut was popping. Now he got mad that we called him his name, Pierre. <laughs> he used to get mad at that. He used to get mad at Salute, Salute, Billy Hard. He just used to get mad we called him Pierre. Like, yo, what? Don't call him Pierre, I'm a grown man, I'm Diddy. You know what I'm saying? I shout out to my man Diddy, man. Cause I got, you, know, you know what? I have to give Diddy his props, man, because, you know, he's a good guy. He got some good kids, man. But the streets, man, the streets will always drag you in, man. And once you become, you become a product of the streets, is what's killing us. You don't got to be a, a fiend for that. See, what, what some people think is real really ain't real in my eyes. But they eyes, whatever they, they think is real, what they think that they condone is real, there's dudes in my hood that y'all would call real ones because they met him in jail, I swear to God. They got popular name, yeah, son, get busy, he robbed something, da, da, da. but at 2 o'clock in the morning, you'll let me get full. I seen these dudes, they can't, they, 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 they can't stop getting hot. Yo, 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 let me, yo, son, let me get three. So yeah, he popular. He's considered a real one. Yeah, up north, he may have cut a couple. He may have stabbed a couple of good guys and kept it funky he's with the movement or whatever movement he's a part of. But he comes home. He's just a real black guy. Never had, never got money on the block. Never did nothing important on the block. The only thing he ever did was when he booked something, he brought that money to the block. No disrespect. So let's be mindful, man. All callouts are not mandatory. All callouts ain't mandatory. 
You know, and you probably know what I'm talking about. There's a bunch of dudes that's famous in our hood for getting busy. Never had, but never got busy when it when it when it, when it was like the two testers put put work on that block. Put put some work on that block. <laughs> now I want to see how gangster you are. Nah, dudes will be nah. They're not with that. They about to sneak thief. You know, try to book you when they got a little twenty two or something, and then you catch them at two o'clock in the morning. This is no lie. The late nights, if you were like this, allegedly like this, chilling could come through, walking all fast and crazy. So you got to give me that same energy. What? What's up? What's going on? Looking around. What's up, man? Yo, yo, yo you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to get some money. I hear you, but I'm not. Yo, they try to hit you with the fake intimidation game where you get scared, clam up. Yo, let me hold something. I ain't got it. I was, how much money you got, man? This is going. This is. You know what, man? Yo, you my man, so I'm gonna do this. You wasn't my man at all. Yeah, 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 I get it. Yo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me get full. I seen a bunch of them niggas. So, you know what I'm saying? And I hear, I hear about them in jail. Yeah, your man getting crazy. That's the best place for him, because he can't survive in these deadly streets. Dude, he, he's still a product of the environment. So now going back into the king and queen thing, understand history, understand England history, Google that, understand the, the England empires and what they took over. At one point in time, England had power in China. They had, actually England had power in Iraq before they gave it to, or whatever they say, Saddam Hussein took over that. You know what I'm saying? England has a lot of, had, has, has, had took a lot of blocks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do your history on this. So, you, know, so you have to understand the thinking of this. You know what I'm saying? This, this this is why England's sort of a rich country, but 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 what destroys England is if they're still part of that European Union thing, all those countries don't make as much money or generate as much income as England. You know what I'm saying? The British. <laughs> Facts. Now, I sound like a great historian, but I'm not. I want you to Google. I might be off about something. You know what I'm saying? I might be off. But this is something you have to you, you have to talk with your kids. Now, now that we left that part of that part alone, you know what I'm saying? Do your history, try something different. Like what the like what I'm trying to say, what the king and queen did by moving out of royalty, they still multi-millionaires, but they moved out and they want to be regular people. It's just like you moving out the hood and you want to live. Ain't a difference, man. It ain't a difference, man. Shout out to Southern Bell, shout out to um Kev Rucker, everybody in that fed spot in Indiana. You know what I'm saying? Terrell Ho. You know what I'm saying? Definitely shout out to West Side St. Louis. Feel me? We here, party people. We here. We here for the building, for the understanding of the building. You know what I'm saying? You can't have revolution without 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 a purpose. Black lives matter now to people that's in position now. And it, and it's and it's still. And 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 it's still. We're still fighting. Do the history. Yeah, Napoleon. There's, there's all these movies that we watch. We watch the movie and you know, don't understand the history in the movies. Watch it. Get into in the more, like my daughter one day. I sat it down one day and I said, Do you know you have West Indian roots, right? She's like, so I have to break it down to her. Oh, okay. So now when you speak to somebody that's West Indian, you understand your roots. Half your family come from the Bahamas. Nassau, Cat Allen. Those are your family roots. The Rucker, the Roker family, the Fergusons. You understand what I'm saying? This is my family. I'm, that's my mother's side of the family. Grandpa Casey and all of them. You know what I'm saying? Ferguson because when my my grandmother's last name was Roker. Once she came to America, she changed it to Ferguson with the man that she married, and that's when they had Casey Ferguson. Casey Ferguson is my grandfather. He fought in the Korean War. You understand what I'm saying? And actually, when he passed away, the U.S. Army buried him. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? This is history. This is worldwide history. Y'all having a history talk in the chat. This is deep. This is this is this is history. And I think that we, we don't speak about this. We look at things for what it is. We have to understand how many years these old people are still in. in uh, you got these people that are still in position. Let's remember that we got. So the only way to change those positions and ideas in Iowa, they're trying to pass some type of voting laws now. So I guess basically what they're saying is if they pass certain type of weird vote voting laws, if, if they think it's some type of shadiness in it, your vote don't count. So catch on. These states are doing this now. 
and they and they got the, the American right to put together these things, and if these people vote on it, then we have to go to another state. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Now, shout, shout out to my man Nut Gambino, my man Nut. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? This is history. Talk your history. You know what I'm saying? Normandy and all that. I remember that. I remember I was watching a movie called Pray for, Pray, Saving Private Ryan. I believe that was Normandy. That's supposed to be a true story. That movie was ill, Saving Private Ryan. That was, that was ill. And allegedly, we think that crystal meth was just invented. They said that the, the Nazi Germans was using crystal meth to stay up and be lit all day. During World War II. So crystal meth been around for 70 years. 70 years. Because they claim, you could Google this, Nazis, crystal meth. They never mentioned that, but they, they was using the crystal meth, and that's why they were so litty. They were so up to keep them up and keep them going. Crazy. So crystal meth been around for so many decades. Then we wonder why it was created on these farms. Yeah, 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 we back, we back, we back. I froze up this a little bit, man. But yes, yes, yes. Um, yo, we got to have these conversations. See, these are the conversations you got to have. We got to have these conversations to understand what the history is. Understand history. Shout out to Joel. You know what I'm saying? We got to understand this history. Now, talking about Switzerland. Let's talk about The Rock. Jay-Z. We're not used to business. So when we see somebody make it, academics made a video saying, you know, he was talking his, you know what I'm saying, talking, you know what I'm saying, academics was talking his talk, talking about Jay-Z and, um, Jay, talking about Jay and, uh, Jay B trying to, you know, the situation that he bait us with the, I'm for black business, but then as soon as he sells it, and he only have black people in position in some of these companies. And I don't think people really understand business. See, businesses. Why lose on the title in the streaming service game? They're not really like in the top. I don't, think, I don't even think they're in the top two. I think it's, you know, Apple and Spotify and the rest of them. You know what I'm saying? So title, so I feel them. Why am I going to keep wasting millions of dollars on something that's not going to work when I can just sell this while it's still hot? Just like that liquor he had. The bar industry was hit crazy in America and across the world with um, COVID. Now, he ain't stupid. I got this liquor that's popular, $300 a bottle, but they'll buy it because Jay-Z face is attached to it. So it may not sell through. For, when, it, when the world opens up again, it may not work for in America, but in Switzerland, but but in Switzerland, that bottle might go for $1,000. Why? Because it's Jay. You have to understand, man, when you branding yourself, and it works, it works if it don't, it don't. This is business. A lot of times in business, your whole thing is to make money. You know, your, your goal is not to lose money. Now, it goes into hiring African Americans. It does make sense. You fire. When you have a company that already has a structure, right? You have a company that already has a structure, right? And, and with this country's structure, all you do is buy the brand. You, try to, you might try to keep certain people that's in place that... Okay, yeah, they was doing a good job. They just need more flow. So it doesn't matter what color. See, we gotta we have to understand that this is business. Listen, I know a lot of people that have owned had black owned businesses that have failed because you hire your own. Like had I had I had I had I hired out of my race, I might have won more. Because African Americans seem to give you a hard time when you hire your own. That's just how business goes. You know what I'm saying? We have to understand business. You know what I'm saying? Understanding businesses, he's not really selling. Like, like, how is he selling out because he want to make $30 million and not lose on something? It's like buying a house, right? It's like buying property. Not buying out, but buying property. Why would you want to buy property and just lose on it because you want to keep it real? Jay-Z know that his name equals money. So why? If it works, it works. I invest in it. If it don't work, I'm selling. Now, does it mean change the makeup of the company? Sometimes you got to keep it the way it is. You know what I'm saying? You, gotta, you, you, got, you, got, you have to pay attention to the market. Who would have thought that Budweiser would have been bought? 
but we're going to do it. Why not? We make it out, we made our money, but we see the marketing change. There's other biz. There's more liquor. There's more competition. There's more. It, it wasn't like how it was before. We got Mosins that was killing the game. We have, um, we have Mosins. We have, you know, Heineken been around for years. We got, we got the Forster beer. So now you have, and now they're bringing, if you notice, you go to Whole Food, they're bringing across a lot of the exotic beers. So you got to understand business. And that's not that thing when 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 Jay do business, a lot of people just, you know, they, they, they feel what they feel because they look at it like, yo, why don't he, when he bought a title, just hide a bunch of African Americans? And, and I don't think that he should keep it the way it is. The, the company wasn't struggling. Now, if the company was struggling, you would change the structure. But the company wasn't struggling. They just was on the market. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? You understand what I'm saying? They, 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 they just was on the market. Okay, let's go. It just didn't work out the way he thought it was going to work. It happens. Who would have thought that Nas would have had money, I think, in one of those cab, in cab services? Who would have thought that? Now it's got like three restaurants in New York City. Who thought there's one that's in Park Slope, I know. There's one in Long Island City somewhere. Some restaurants that Nas got his money in, but but you would never know unless Nas talk about it. Nas, uh, Nas in, is, has invested high, highly in Silicon Valley. You know what Silicon Valley is? A lot of companies came out of Silicon Valley. That's like the tech center of the United States of America. You have, um, you have, um, You know what I'm saying? We have YouTube came off of some guys that worked at, that came out of Silicon Valley that worked for some of these companies, you know? And some of these other streaming services, Facebook came from a bunch of guys and that's the newer generation. So it's not, so nothing stays the same. So if you invest in something and I'm not really making no money in this, but somebody else want to buy it and, and give, and, and, and I can make a 30, 40% profit, why not? Why? Just tell me why not. And most of the time, even when even, even when they sell, just because it's branded as a music thing, they might even tell Jay like, "Yo, you know what? We need you to be the face of this for the next five summers. We're gonna give you a hundred thousand a year, just to keep you know the, the just to keep the brand running, your connections and connected. One thing, if you ain't learn nothing from Steve Stout, that's what I'm saying. We don't pay attention to what he has, right? Right? Steve Stout is one of the major pioneers." And getting dudes endorsements, Sprite commercials, and this commercial, and that commercial, getting people plugged in with the right people. That's where the rooms change. 50 Cent ain't where he at because he sold diamond. He's a, he's where he at because he started mingling the rooms. Hey, 50, I got an idea. What do you think about movies? So I got 5 million sitting. I invest in that. There's a couple of movies that 50 Cent actually was in that he put money into. Because a lot of those movies go over budget. All right, yo, I got two million. So now he's plugged in. 50 Cent is in like seven, eight movies with some grade A, with, 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 with some A-list actors. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. Now he has his shows popping. He made those connections. Because this is what you do. And if it don't work, I'm selling. It's just, it's, this is just what you do. You don't check, believe me, you, you don't think 50 Cent has a whole bunch of Asians and whatever the case may be working under these high positions? You can hire the homies from the hood, but they got to be educated. They got to understand their position. Not educated, but understand their position. I'm not hiring you to be the keep it real individual at the job. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to hire you at the desk. Yo, what, what you looking at? And, yo, I'm too weird for this. And, yo, in 89. I'm not hiring you for that. I'm hiring you to make sure that we make money and we keep order in this office. I'm not hiring you to treat them like they're on the block because these dudes is college dudes. These dudes don't know nothing about block street life. They want this life. They don't understand it. These dudes want to get their 100000 and go. You got people that's a part of hip-hop that never been a part of hip-hop. Only they know about hip-hop is they went to school for this. I swear to God. Columbia University, was it like six years ago, they had a course on Nazilmatic. I think right now, there's courses on Nas Illmatic in like 
10 major universities where you physically take a course on the storyline of Illmatic. That's Illmatic. That's, that, that's, that's Illmatic. You know what that says? That Illmatic, that album, was the closest in that era it came to New York City in them lyrics. Other than the Wu-Tang Clan. Other than Raekwon the Chef Perkwood. Other than Ghostface Killer. We here, party people. Tell me, if I'm freestyling, let me know, bro. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? This, this is, this is money. This dude's just thinking money. The only thing that's different is that this COVID thing that shut down mad establishments. But in those foreign countries, where, see, a company like Moet that actually bought it, you know, Henny. They're big in all the vacation spots. You know where you were the chuletas at? Those liquors is big there where all the money's at. Where, they were, where the money hang out at. Let me get four bottles of Ace of Spade. Those are the spots he's going to. This is just, because we all, bro, not just me, but people in the chat. It's, this is because there's experiences in life, bro. This is because this is experiences in life. I've experienced conversations I sat around. Let me tell you, the first internet hip hop show I ever seen that I physically went to was on AOL.com. It was some hip hop show on West Broadway. I was saying this yesterday, Ghostface Killer and the Jizzle was there. It was, a, it was off of Broadway by NYU, by Spring Street or something. Cause you know, Def Jam used to be over there by McDonald's, by Spring Street. Def Jam, where they, where they was doing your MTV raps, I've been there because my cousin was a big party promoter. He used to be on the radio in Albany before they had a commercial station. He was on the college station, so they get the same VIP list to get on the pick up record list, and he brought me to Def Jam, Def Jam Records. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So I, it's just experiences, bro. This is just, just experience. And I'm telling you my experiences. And I hope that's when my experiences is like, oh, okay. So think about this. The first hip hop show I seen on the internet to me was allhiphop.com. I forgot the name of the show. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If y'all remember, oh shit, AOL. Y'all can probably Google AOL hip hop show on the internet and it'll come up. That's the first one I ever seen that came online. This is the Napster era. Remember when Napster was doing all that pirated music? This is that era. It was interviewing rap artists. And me, my, my, my man D Not, shout out to D Not. East New York Freestyle Fanatics Linden Projects. You know what I'm saying? He brought me there with him. My man D, man. I hope D is good, man. My man D Locks. You know what I'm saying? Dan Cologne for some of that gnome, that Cito Cologne. Follow him on, follow him on um, Facebook, Cito Cologne. That's my guy. He brought me there. Yo, Z, you in the town? Because we was going to, actually, when we was going, we was going with my cousin to an event. I forgot the event. It was an event we was going to. Exactly. This is that ever when Napster, AOL, was AOL was number one, BlackPlanet.com. That's the first time I ever met YB. I met YB on AOL because he was the Valentine homie that to be online all day talking about he was from Vanderveer. <laughs> when it was AOL.com. So salute free YB. The first time I met YB was online. Cause he, he used to be like, yo, I'm from Vanderbilt, it's mad Crips over here. It's just me and a couple of homies. And he was he was in Vanderbilt. He was Valentine. Tony Starks, aka Tony Starks. You know what I'm saying? Facts. This is history, New York history. AOL wind up buying, I think, NBC at one point in time. It was part of NBC Free YB. When I was talking to him back then, we talking about, you know what I'm saying? You AOL time, like, damn, Zeke, you took it back. He was Valentine. And you know, Vendorville back then, that whole area was crypt out. So to be homie in that area back then, they, see, dudes don't understand about the B and C thing. It's easy to talk about it. But to live in those territories is different. See, I, it's easy. I'm from where I'm from, we don't have B and C issues. You know what I'm saying? But just imagine you live in Vanderville, you homie. You know, that whole corridor is crypt out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the world they lived in. They was gang banging, gang banging. Brooklyn's always been crazy. Them areas you don't even go to. Like, wait, we live, you, you go, what? The 50s, I'm not going over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how dudes talk. Like, just like other little neighborhoods, dudes, they're popping up on 100 Street of Church with their big chain out. 
you're going to get booked. Them Jamaican dudes don't be playing them games, man. But that's a whole other video. But what I'm trying to get to is... <laughs> know what I'm saying? We talking about back then. That Vinny Vet thing was crazy. You know what I'm saying? But that's how I met YB. Back into the era of technology. Now, had we paid attention to the technology, then we'd have invested money into all that, man. When AOL went public, but when AOL went public, we we dropped the ball on that. A lot of things we're not we're not paying attention to some certain things, man. You know this is money, man. If you got five thousand dollars sitting somewhere, why not invest it? Money in the money in the super. <laughs> you hit you, you know what I'm saying? Billy Hard, you don't know Billy Hard strictly. Times has changed, bro. Remember, it was crazy over there back then, but. Times has changed, man. And then somebody got smart and they made MySpace, remember? Because there was already an operating system. Who had Roadrunner? Remember Roadrunner when that shit first popped with the, the cable wires under the ground? That 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 faster internet? Remember the faster internet thing? That's how AOL existed. Because remember to have AOL, you had to put the wire in the, in, the, in the phone jack. It was crazy. Put the wire and all type of, you had to have all type of modems and all that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just Zoom was popping, was popping. Definitely salute to my man, June Body, 163rd. You heard BX Bo, you know what I'm saying? My man, Turtle, my man, Turtle, um, from Web, Peanut from Web. We here, man, Zeke Black. You know, Zeke Black is in the building, man. I'm here for the knowledge, born, understanding. My man, Shine Outlaw, Peace of the Gods and Earth in Albany, Peace of the Gods and Earth in the Five Bubbles, Medina. Am I right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Peace of the Gods in Medina. You know what I'm saying? Peace to God. But shout out, yo, watch Hip Hop Uncovered. Bimmy's doing some major things. Salute to, salute to Bimmy, man. Bimmy uh, is doing major things. I support that. Salute that. You know what I'm saying? Bimmy's doing major things, man. He's doing his Hip Hop Uncovered. He had dudes on the block. Shout out to 118th Sutton Boulevard. You know what I'm saying? My man Dave Bing. You know what I'm saying? Um, my man Chop. But you know Chop from, you know, 161. You know what I'm saying? Chop. My man Butter, Butter Get Well, you know what I'm saying? Little cousin Corey Lashley, salute, you know what I'm saying? H Money Bags, salute from Sufton. All the little homies by the store, by, by, you know what I'm saying? Or, or Sufton. Yeah, Hip Hop Uncovered, B. He doing his thing, man. So definitely like to salute Bimmy, get in tune with him. You know, follow him on our IG. You know what I'm saying? Bimmy, Bimmy, Bimmy from the Prime Team. You know what I'm saying? Real dude, man. He's liberal with his conversations. Like he uh, just because he know Fifty and Prime and this, he don't get caught up in all that. Well, he's willer than him. He keeps it liberal, and that's what you're supposed to do. If he ain't got nothing to do with you, just mind your business. That's that's a personal thing. It had nothing to do with the money. I and that's where the, my ever was different. At. If you rob the crew, then it's all our beef. But if it's a personal thing between you and him, we mind our business. Listen, man, you got him, you got him. That has nothing to do with us. Nowadays, dudes is minding people's business. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, it's coming out. I'm going to have to feed the wolves. I'm going to have the, the, the limited edition to punch you in the face. Because some dudes need to get punched in the face. We had that for limited edition. It might be a little violent, but we're going to get that to the streets. We're going to have, um, I don't know how many do, man. E war, oh God, what'd you say? E hall, Zach, you know the neighborhoods. So what I'm trying to say is salute to Jay, man. Jay ain't a fool. Who wants to lose money because you want to keep it real? Academics, but you know what? I respect academics' opinion, though, know, because it's to be respected. That's how he feels. You know what I'm saying? But you have to look at business. When you, when you get to a, a level of high business, when you're investing in something and you don't want to lose, who wants to lose? If, 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 if it's just like trading places. Remember when we trading places? It was a comedy, but it had a message in it. Remember those guys that was getting all the, the leaked information and they invested, and when they seen the price going crazy, sell, sell, sell. Remember, sell, sell, because they didn't want to lose their money. Who wants to sit back and lose two hundred million? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like now, nah, I'm just gonna keep it real. Got change. We have to change the way we think, man. We have to change where we, where we think. We have to think not about ourselves, but about our kids, about our um, for, about what comes behind us. We have to we have we have to concern ourselves with things like that. You feel me? This is what's gonna take us to the top, man. 
You know what I'm saying? This is what's going to take us to the top. We got to be mindful of what we're doing and how we're doing. Bimmy's doing it right, though. He's doing it right. Whoever put that hip-hop and cover together, he's doing it right, bro. He's doing it right. Know why he's doing it right for? Because he's showing the streets and how it played a part to hip-hop. Because a lot of hip-hop artists want to just like street cats, right? Hip-hop artists would go to clubs where the street cats was at. Street cats was just trying to go where hip-hop artists was at. Why ever being why Kim would want to go to the Latin quarters? Why? Because this is what was there. Big chains, Brooklyn catch, Nassim chains, and all type of craziness. You know what I'm saying? This is why they went there. Dudes want to go to the rooftop because that, that was a spot to go. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It was a different time, a different ever, different vibration. We have to get on we have to get on board with that and, and, and see it for what it is. That joint is, is, and I like it because he's breaking down and how some dudes from, from the street was able to get into hip hop. Not just rapping or DJ, but just executive positions. But you know what destroyed a level with hip hop with us is that we never got to own a lot of our music, a lot of our slangs, a lot of our, a lot of things that, like right now, if you walk into a Walmart store, they're playing the Sugar Hill Brothers. Whoever owned that catalog is getting a check because Walmart is all over the place. So you just say, if Walmart plays that Sugar Hill Gang on a radio all day, those are radio spins that people were paying for. Those are copywritten songs. That's business, man. We have to learn to be more business-minded when we come up with something. Great idea. Hey! You're like, skew! Get it copyrighted. You never know. Somebody might make a platinum hit. Skew! Boom! That, that might become a jingle. A lot of y'all may not even know what a jingle was, but a jingle was what they used in commercials. When a lot of commercials, we hit them songs and they used the beat and all that. That was a jingle. Whoever owned the music gets a check. I heard them playing a break beat in Walmart. I'm like, what? So whoever owned that break beat that we used to break dance to? They was playing Blondie. He's playing Blondie. Like, yo, the Blondie and Fat Five Freddy song. This is in Walmart. Now, back to the nitty gritty, because this is what we're here for. I had to get I had to get ready. I had to get rid. I had to get to the point. And now we're going to go someplace else. A guy in a yellow jacket, rest in peace to him. You no, know, I play for all families involved, young boys. I don't know what happened in front of that store. It just looked to me like the young boys was in the wrong. The young boys was out for all the smoke. He might have been going to get a Lucy, but they was there for all the smoke. And when, and when, and then when Sun came, it looked like they was just on go. Like it is what it is. And when Sun whoever with the yellow jacket was pulling up, Duke walked out. Out of uh, we don't know what was said. Out of, uh, out of, uh, Duke slapped him. Boom. When Duke slapped me, he went to dig. This is what I mean. He went to dig. When he went to dig, son hit him. Boom. So we can't say an innocent dude was, because he was on go. Because if he was able to dig, but this is what I mean. I don't, I, 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 you know what I'm saying? If, if you're going in up territory or you got to run around with that thing, you keep, you hold that thing in your hand. That thing's supposed to be on your, on your, in your hand. You walk in, you already know the thing is, the thing is on you. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to dig in. You start digging, young boy hit a bum. And that was, that was just like the young boy did it probably in self-defense. Like, I'm not going to let him clap me. I got, I'm, I'm gripped up. You know what I'm saying? You know, that was popping. You know, it looked like it was popping. I never went to that. Like, I'm messing with Because you already see it was popping. And it's messed up because those young boys look like they must be from around them. You got no jackets and all that. I mean, they must be from around them. Come with the territory. You got to be smart. He went to dig and... What? Boom. So, is it self-defense? They might look at it like that. Like, well, we got gun possession. But if you didn't shoot, he what? He might have shot. They don't know, but they, they, a good lawyer, I get him 15 flat. You know what I'm saying? For a gun charge. Can't be faking the funk with a nasty dunk. And that's what happened. You can't be doing that. These young boys, you see, they was posted up already, looking around all crazy, Jones. 
What's up? What's going on? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? They was already on, on, on targeted go. You know what I'm saying? Now, this part of my show, I'm going to dedicate to the Shell Brothers. My block. Rodney Shell, Brian Shell, Lexington Projects, 183. Not 183, but 183 in the back. Y'all know the brothers, man. Good dudes, man. Can't fake a funk with a nasty dunk, man. You know, you're gonna fool those young boys. Why you think Duke slapped before? Duke slapped, you know, and son on go. See, because we was young. Remember, we, I ain't gonna front. I'll be right back. Because we all was what young, young once. And this is what happened. You know what? That was a that picture description and video was what we did in the 90s, right? Yo, come here to the store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got beef in the hood, so come and we can so 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 take this walk with me. So take this walk with me to the store. We post up by the store, it's on. When Duke slapped him, it's it's crazy. When Duke slapped him, he slapped him knowing son gripped up. As soon as he did the get him, bump. But that's something that we would have did in the 90s. Though. But, but, but that video was something that would have happened in 1990. You know what I'm saying? 89. That's just what happens in the hood, man. You can't fake a fuck. You can't be thinking these little niggas and other than that. You can't be get you as a little nigga. See me, I'm not an idiot. I'm across the street. I'm going to go to the store. Oh, here these young boys go. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Here these young boys go. Oh, they posted up like that? It, it must be smoke out here. Now, these young boys, they, we're a little different because we might go, well, he be with son and them, but he ain't down with them. These young boys don't pick and choose because they don't trust nobody. You know what I'm saying? Definitely shout to Southside Queens is in the building. 40 Projects, Baisley, The Bricks, Baisley Gardens, you know, something Boulevard, 121. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bino and all of them on Linden. You know what I'm saying? Um... It's, it, it gets for real. So the young boys is on point. I'm just on point. Like, oh, I ain't got time for these young boys. You know what I'm saying? I'll be on my block. They might be people with the young boys on my block. They're going to try me. They're going to look at me crazy. They're going to be other than that. Then you got one who's going to feel like, man, F them, boom. Now, I'm going to tell you what's so crazy about the slap. And Duke slapped him. I don't think the young boys are going to hit them. Hit him until he started digging. That's how it looked like. He only hit him because he started digging. You know what I'm saying? They just was going to violate something. Like once he slapped them, they probably was going to dust them off. But then when he went to dig, you know what I'm saying? He has a self-defense case on, on camera. Like, yo, but he's going to go to jail for the gun. The gun, they're not gonna, the gun, he, allegedly, he's not going to get around that. But, no, he was, I was scared for my life. He was digging. Boom, he got a gun. And I know somebody that beat a case that. That's what I'm saying this for. Because I know somebody that physically beat a case like that. He was in the bar. He had a beef with somebody. He had a fight in one place. Da, 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 da. He was in the bar. He was gripped up. I'm going to talk about this because this is, you know, the case didn't happen. Duke went up in the bar. When Duke went up in the bar, Duke went up in the bar, shoot him. Clang, 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 clang. Boom. Duke ain't, Duke got up. Whatever happened, Duke hit him back. Gung, gung. When, when, when he hit him with the gung, gung, Duke died. Boom. Hit the floor. Hit the canvas. They locked him up for the homicide, you know, the gun. He wanted to beat in the homicide. Even though New York State don't have a self-defense, you know what I'm saying, Law, He beat that like it was just common knowledge, like common sense. Like, yo, if you didn't defend yourself, he was going to kill you. So you had to defend yourself. But take this 15. But to beat a lot of those cases without a good lawyer, they make you go all the way to trial. And you're going to blow to the gun. When you blow to the gun, they could give you up to 15 years, and that's exactly what he got. He got 15 years for that, you know what I'm saying? But he didn't get the L, but he just, he wound up doing like 15, you know what I'm saying? Good dude, though, you know what I'm saying? I was there, I remember that whole night. So, Shorty may have, in that, in, 
with a good lawyer, though. Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no stand your ground. So you, you ain't got to play like, I thought he was going to kill me. You know what I'm saying? you see the camera. But a good lawyer that gets you around that. But he's going to have to go to trial with that. Because, you know how grand, grand juries are indicted a ham sandwich. You know what I'm saying? So you know how that go. Boom. God forbid he gets booked for the situation. They got to, they, they got to. But. The bad part about the situation is that Duke slapped him. You know what I'm saying? So that sort of agitated the situation, but he ain't know Duke was in the slap. He was in front of the store. See, I ain't gonna fuck whoever did that. He, he do got he got that. Like I ain't know someone was gonna slap him. Y'all see what I was doing? I was in front of the store. You know what I'm saying? He could even play the part like I wasn't even with them niggas. But we gotta talk about that. But you know what I'm saying? It's just it's just you know it's crazy, man. So we have to think. Some of these young boys they do move the way we sort of moved back in the days. Remember, they got so much beef, you can't afford to go to the corner store. Me, I'm not going to no hot corner stores. Not me. Nah, I'm not going over there. There's many, plenty of times I could have stopped at a quick gas station out here. I'm not going over there. But I'm not doing that. Those gas stations where dudes are getting their cars shot up and dudes are getting body. Why would I go in there to buy a beer? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What business I got going to buy a beer in one of these stores? Yeah, exactly. You know the nose? You know what I'm saying? You're going to get 15. Uh, but with a good lawyer, that you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no business going to a gas station. They got shit out here called murder mobile, no type of different reasons. I ain't got no business going up in these gas stations. So my, you want me to get two Heineken's and it's already smoked. You know what I'm saying? He, he this dude is gripped up, everything looking around. Yo, 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 what's up? Yo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting that Cali, yeah, yeah. So this is this 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 is this is what we pop this, this is what we popping. Well, another store, man. So we got to take that as a lesson learned. And when you watch a lot of these videos, that's what we have. With these young boys be going to op territory. Because a lot of dudes be feeling like, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you what it is. A lot of dudes be feeling, it's your best, exactly. A lot of dudes be feeling like their beef ain't my beef. You know how many times I got beat up because of that when I was younger? I could go over there because I ain't people with them. My man says, as soon as I walk in the store, they start looking at me like they start looking at me like they got China, like they, like they cross sided. Like it's crazy. Like what's going on? Boop, and why am I fighting for? It? Because I don't got beef with y'all, but my man's do. So I had to pick and choose. You got you, I can't. I that's when I realized I can't have the attitude. Y'all got beef, but I don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to pick. And, I had to pick and choose that. Even though I'm on the block, I ain't people with them dudes over there, but y'all are. So I know that when I pull up over there, I'm going to get the same consequences that you're going to get these niggas. So I don't want to play the stupid one. Like, but I don't fuck with them like that. You don't care about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Those are your mans. That's how dudes look at it. Unless you're just an official dude. I'm going to be honest with you. Official dude in the hood where dudes go, you know what? We're not going to bother him because you know the consequences going to be there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, those are the only dudes that really get... I could go anywhere in the hood pass in certain hoods during wartime. Or the ones that they know, like, nah, I ain't playing with him. He got a whole breed of killers someplace else. You know what I'm saying? Those are the only dudes that get that, I do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Even them, they get lined up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you see what happened, no, rest in peace, Ming. Ming's original, orig is an official cat. Rest in peace, Ming. That, that one sour the way that sound. They beef with somebody, somebody came back and hit him. It's an OG out the hood. But these young boys, they be so much on point with op activity. We thinking like, are oh, they young and dumb and they, 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 they do be high all day. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even gang affiliation. But now it is more gang affiliation. It's just block shit. You from 9-9, you from nine nine, your man's the people with dudes with a hundred tenth. You ain't... You, you drink with them, you smoke with them, you ain't running with them, but you know when they go to a test move party, you in the corner with them, people see you. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So now when you coming through a Hunt Temple and Lex by Clinton projects, you walking with the swag, you thinking, I ain't got no beef with them. They do. And they cross the street, and they're walking behind you, and they're talking a funny language. Like, yo, come here, let me talk to you. And then you, you look at the around like, you talking to me? Yeah, come here, stupid. Yo, what's up? What's up, papa? Where your man at? So you be thinking like, my man, yo, wasn't, don't he be with such and such? And you, before you get to try to explain yourself, 
know what I'm saying? And then you're wondering, you're getting beat on for a beef you do not have in your head. And then I realize affiliation gets you caught up a long way. You know what I'm saying? And me and my man, my man had a great talk with me. And he said, yo, Zeke, man. He said, yo, man. Is that your boys don't care about your past, man? He said, yo, he said, yo, Zeke, man. Get out your head that you, that, that you don't got beef because your man's got beef. Get that out your dome, bro. <laughs> you, you, next time they're going to stab your stupid ass up. That, 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 that must be what you want because you know they beefing with them. They see you in the club doing the running man for 20 minutes. They seen you at St. Francis doing them. I ain't gonna lie to you. See, you know Zeke from 88, 89, that was my dance, the running man. So the reason why I'm saying this, y'all might be laughing, but it's the truth. I was doing the running man. So they be like, you know, my man's a guy, go Zeke, Zeke, go Zeke, man, go on 31, what? It's, it was crazy. I'm telling you, they used to get me to go to parties to do this shit, I swear to God. But God ain't got nothing to do with this, but this is the God that's there. Come get me, you see, there's a party over here. Do that dance. The only two, there was a couple of dancers in the crew, but I don't want to mention another nigga because he ain't get mad at me. Yo, Zeke, what you had to say I was a dancer for, man? You know what I'm saying? The special way, yo, yo, I wasn't, uh, see, I wasn't into all that. I was just doing the running man crazy. I, was, I, I used to do the running man like hot sauce, son. Just like hot sauce. Like this. So think about it. So, when, so of course, at the St. Francis party, dudes would see me doing the running man with the crew. Or they'll see me at a 110th Street party doing the running man with the crew. Or they'll see me at a Norman Thomas High School party doing the running man. Shout out to little Louis Vega. He used to be DJing little high school parties at Norman Thomas. Shout out to him, man. Shout out to Louis. You know what I'm saying? He was killing the set. I saw doing the running man on that freestyle joint. They'd be like, oh, is he black? Yeah, it was the same as he black back then. 131, 131. And I keep forgetting that some of the Ops family go to school with us. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm coming through. I think I ain't got no beef. Back then we had the Walkmans. Remember the AO Walkmans, the Clashes? A AO, a AO, a AO Walkman right back then is compared to an iPhone. Having an AO Walkman was like top notch. You're walking around, it's clear. And then I see a bunch of dudes. My body get nervous. I said, get nervous. I feel the, you know that, because I think something's going to happen. I'm like, nah, but I ain't got no beef with them. I ain't worried about that. I see them across the street. So I'm still thinking like, oh God. <laughs> it's too late to turn around now. So yo, you begin to talk to yourself like, how, I ain't got no people with them niggas. So then there's always somebody that goes, yo, he be with them niggas that we was fighting with over there. He be with son such and such and huh, woo. Yeah, that's him. That's the guy that was doing the, the dance, the dance. Remember the guy with the dance? And the nigga snuffed me. Ah! I'm like, oh, shit. Yo, yo. I remember that shit happened to me, man. Hunt tells you, man. That shit turned into the sprint, my nigga. Because you had to get out of there now. He, there wasn't, see, back then, when you got jumped, it really wasn't the kicking shit. And throwing, like, they, when you got jumped, it wasn't a jump to make you come back. Like, I'm going to kill him. It was a jump for a jump. Like when we catch them, we're just gonna bust them all in their head eight, nine times. It wasn't getting garbage cans and foreign objects and all that shit. It was just a bunch of hits to the head, but I'm like, oh God. I'm hitting floors. I'm not trying to get hit by a car. Shit was crazy. And then I, I get to Taft, my grandmother prizes the like, Oh shit. Did they see what happened? I just got jumped. Why win? I'm tipping the fuck you doing? I'm the Lex. This one with I'm tipping the Lex had all the dope in the world. What the fuck you doing over there? Now, come over here. My man's had beef with some niggas and niggas. I don't even know what happened. And every time I tell the story, niggas laugh, man. Niggas said, that's the guy that was doing that funny dance, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? That was crazy. <laughs> Those was serious. Those shits was serious, man. It's just that they didn't do all that wrestling. I told you, all that wrestling garbage can shit. Unless you really just been crazy. You didn't just fuck, bing, 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 bing. I said, oh, God, oh. I got to get out of here. I had to get out. I had to. This is some real shit. So it needs to say, I learned. Do not go shopping in op territory without your crew. It was like going to what y'all call Jew man, to walk on third Ave. Yo, we walking on third together as a squad. Shit might get, get a little dangerous. 
in them hundreds. You know what I'm saying? But after a while, we all became, you know, it was little nigga shit. We all began to respect each other. We all love each other, man. You know what I'm saying? But life and times of growing up in the hood, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's some real shit. That's why I love affiliation. I think about now where they shoot it. Dudes, dudes, that wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you get hit with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the Puerto Ricans, the Puerto Ricans, they bought the foreign objects. The raises, I'm going to throw. Remember one time I had beef with a nigga, my man had a thing of alcohol in the match. I said, yo, let's go. Hold on, chill, 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 chill. I'm not trying to blow the nigga up, bro. I just want to I just want to punch him in the head a couple of times and y'all hold his arm. You know what I'm saying? So I could just hit him. I, I, my man had the ice pick. Come on, Zeke, let's go. Hold on, chill. We're not in Puerto Rico, my nigga. My nigga, we're not in Puerto Rico. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, come on, man. Because <laughs> I just would have fight. Y'all would have catch a homicide. You know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas would have catch a homie. You know what I'm saying? I just want to fight. Get my little... Cause I'm just like that point guard from Harlem that only get two swings in and is good. And I, I do all the stylish shit, do the dance and all that. That shit was dope. But I'm telling you, them Puerto Rican niggas have... My man's had to... I said, yo, I got people to niggas over here. My man pulled up the alcohol shake. Yo, let's go. My other man had an ice pick. The ice pick was this long. I was like, nah, you know what? It ain't that serious, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to catch a body, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You niggas is all go. Like, yo, these niggas is different. I just want to get money. I, I, I stood away from that. I did my best to stay away from that. But when... when, when when the nigga said, I'm gonna come back and spray this shit up, I had to ask somebody. Yo, what he just meant by that shit? Yo, he got guns, see? Oh, P. Razo, man. I'm P. Rue, you know what I'm saying? Well, I gotta keep it funky with you. 110 Street and Lex. Y'all niggas know it was rough back in the days. Rest in peace, Razo, man. Rest in peace, Razo. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Superman. Rest in peace, Tone Lopez. You know, these are great guys you grew up around, man. I never seen, uh, this is no lie, man. I never seen a, a non violent hustler, man. Tone Lopez was just. About his paper, bro, and the neighborhood love. I never seen a love drug dealer before. Leslie, I never seen a, a love drug. Even his picture's still on the wall of the building, man. Like, a love drug dealer. Like, there was no, other than what was going on in that block, there was no crime. People was actually safe. You'd have thought it was the mob on that block. But shout out to the whole Hill crew, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I was going to PR and all that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are the dudes that we began to we hear the whispers of, yo, you own a house in Puerto Rico. We ain't see that. Remember, we getting 20 cents a bottle. We ain't know. Like, well, you can buy a house off this shit? Niggas, this Puerto Rican's buying houses. He had a Porsche. He had the van. He had the stealing. He had the golf. He was like, yo, he's getting bread. Mind you, all this out of one spot. This wasn't four spots. This wasn't out of towners. This is. You know what I'm saying? This is out of one spot. He had the Sterling, the white golf. He had the van. And he had the one African-American down with him. Kenny Black. Free Kenny Black. You know what I'm saying? The one time Kenny Black had a clean army jacket on. Was that ever? You know what I'm saying? It was strictly paper. Bread. Niggas was not playing no psychological games. This is before I'm telling you, man. I'm going to tell you how official dude was. I'm going to tell you how official he was. We had the Brooklyn cast that was down the block and wash. Ant murdered them niggas. Ant murder never violated the hill hole. He he stood on Third Ave in them projects. He never because Tone was too smooth for that, man. Tone was, let me tell you something, man. Tone was a smooth dude, man. Only guy I know that I sit on I sit in my park, my park a lot, what y'all call Willie Burgers, that was my park a lot. Nine name for the Lex. All the cars would be out there. You know what I'm saying? All the cars be. All the cars be out there. Tone to have the van, the Porsche, the Sugar Hill Tone to come up town. Sugar Hill Tone to be out there with the MP. That's when Sugar Hill Tone had the MPV. All that in the park a lot. DT from Brian Ab Boys, my man Feeples. He be out there with the van, with that, with that Wrangler, with the top off. Come on, bro. They don't, this is all history. But see, what y'all do is y'all let people narrate these stories to you. That Sugar Hill basketball team had mad East Side Cats a part of it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Had mad East Side Cats. We had the football squad. My man, shout out to my man Big Head, man. 
I think Big Cat played like in five games. They won a chip, though. They won a couple of chips. You know what I'm saying? They, they won a couple of chips. My man Green Eyes is part of that. Green Eye Mike. Yeah, shout out to Joe Blow. Joe Blow, it's the guys that Joe Blow, you know what I'm saying? They had a squad. They had a squad. Chase, Charles, Charles Black. You know, Charles Black is ill with them sports, B. Charlie, you know what I'm saying? They won chips, championships. Sugar Hill. Then they took it to Rucker. EBC Classic, the first one. The second one, Fat Joe and Jay was beefing. The third one, Fat Joe and them was beefing. But the first one, Sugar Hill won it. Skip to the Lewis on that basketball squad. The little Herbie from Jeff. Y'all know the little Herbie. Y'all know y'all see him go to Zeke Black said, what's up? He was on that championship team. Rock City Yo was on that championship team. You know what I'm saying? Money. You know what I'm saying? Money team. Everybody got that long. That's why I understand how, how is it that y'all could create a whole gang and y'all have all this conflict. And I'm telling about... I just spoke about 20 different blocks. <laughs> and these dudes all played on the same football team. Joe Blow from Boom. Um. You had niggas from um, Lulu Ralphie and Chris Brother. Remember Lulu Ralphie? He from Tav. Um, shout out to my man Ralphie, man, for my grandmother building. Man. That's my guy with day one. When I, when I first used to come to East Harlem, that's my guy. Him and his brother, Lulu Chris. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, B. How do all these neighborhoods come together on the football field to play for one team? But when you speak of Sugar Hill 141, you think about the West Side. But that Sugar Hill had West Side cats and East Side cats. A lot of cats didn't even know Sugar Hill Tone used to be on the East Side heavy. On the East Side heavy. A lot of dudes don't even know that, man. This is all, this is all, and this is, and, and, and when you speak about Sugar Hill Tone, same conversation we speaking about OG Wong. That's his circle. Those are his that those are his friends, OG Wan and the rest of them Dominicans that was uptown. On 141, 139, all that. That's still Sugar Hill. That's not Dominican land. That's Sugar Hill. It sound crazy what I just said, but Dominican land is more further uptown by like Washington Heights, 176, you know, Port Washington, all that uptown. Yeah, facts. Free Chubbs, man. I hope I hope free I think I hope I hope Chris is free to his brother. Squad, man. Yo. Subscribe to my man Unique, man. Unique is home, man. The East Side Cats, we was here. Shout out to my man Papa Jesus from 100 Street. You know what I'm saying? Papa, you know what I'm saying? All them dudes play with the same with Sugar Hill. These is different blocks. Now, how can one guy put 20 blocks together that, that can play on a football team? Different hoods. Jeff, Rock City had Jeff, was in Jeff. Him and Herbie from Little Herbie from Jeff. Papa from 100th Street. This is different block. Huh? First Street, I mean. Scar and them, Scar, JG. They from Wash. Niggas on my block. Mikey, Heck. From my block, right? Charles from Wash. How you get all these dudes to play on the same football team from different blocks and we wasn't going at it with each other? They had all the OGs on the team. I'm not going to OG, but they OGs. And that's what kept the streets calm. The respect, the respect was calm. You dudes can't keep a set together. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy that this guy had all these different blocks on the same team from... Football, remember the softball team? They had the softball thing. Shout out to my man Felix, Felix Dave Old Brother. Shout out to Phil, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Adam Torres Concerts. Yeah, now we in the streets, right? <laughs> Straight face, Ted Smooth, what's poppin'? DJ Demo, what's poppin'? Chill from the east side, what's poppin'? What's up, man? Now you got me back on my million dollar block talk again. I didn't wanna get back there, but I'm near now. Let's talk about it, man. What blocks are you from? What side blocks are you from? Cause this, I'm telling you, how do you put 20 cats from different blocks on the same team. My block is 99, Jeff 112, 115 Street. Oh, G, Kick and Pre. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to buy Ron G tapes and Mr. G. Shout out to Mr. G's, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the 107 crew that, you know what I'm saying? That, that Gold Rush mob. Shout out to 107 for Lex, you know what I'm saying? Dudes on the 104th in Lex, you know what I'm saying? Hunt Third Street in Lex and Lex and Park. It was nothing but love, man. It was nothing but East Side love, man. That's what it was. It was nothing but, and that's why. That's why I, it bothers me. It, it, it's crazy that 
How could you? I just put the elements together. And most of these dudes now is doing good in their life. They got jobs. They own something. You know what I'm saying? That's when hustling was fun. We wasn't trying to kill each other. We wasn't trying to. Then we started going to jail. And then that's when the newer culture came in. And that's when it just got like the murder rate. 23rd Precinct, we sort of respected Blondie. Like when Blondie said, I'll leave your niggas alone. You don't want to play with those guns. We didn't play with those guns. How do you want to spot all day? And I'm pretty sure there was guns out there. And there was no threat of no stick of kids. It's beyond my imagination. Blondie. Blondie went up on him. Listen, man. I'm, all of us, you got a gun. I'm gunning you down. I'm chasing you down and putting hands and feet on you. So dude's like, I'm not going to run around no guns on me. We're getting money. And it's funny because because we wasn't shooting, because we wasn't killing each other, the only police we had to worry about was those dirty yellow cabs and TNT. When, once TNT leave the block, I ain't going to lie to you. When TNT left and when, when we had TNT leave the block, it was a free for all. Because blue and whites don't jump out unless you do something physically in their face. Blue and whites just drive by. That's what they do. They drive by. So what we do is we don't do nothing on the avenue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we wasn't stupid. So what happens when you're not stupid, you have to let the people that like to sit downstairs, like some of our grandmothers, some of our mothers, still have access to do what they've been doing for the last 20 years in them projects. And this is what alleviates 911 phone calls. Oh, no, I don't want my grandmothers in front of the building. Who that shit to the... And that's how... Out of sight, out of mind. You dudes like to showcase what you're doing. And this is why a lot of you have a baby to transfer into the legal world. Shout out to Johan and all of them. Because a lot of your dudes are still stuck on trying to impress the world and and still fair in others. Like I told you, you can't if you New York City is a breeding breeding place, you go anywhere and make it. You can make it in New York. You just gotta know how to bust a move. You gotta know how to you gotta, you gotta know you gotta change your crowd. You gotta talk to people. If you've been around a lot of money, you know that feeling already. You know what I'm saying? You know, dudes was living good at the age of 18, 19. Dudes wasn't trying to be in Dawn Diva magazine. Dudes wasn't trying to be in Fed magazine. Dudes didn't want to be in a movie called Paid in Full. Dudes was paying bills off of, off the block. Like, yo, I gotta pay a light bill this week. Hell yeah, TNT. I call it TNT cell playing with JJ. Rest in peace, JJ, man. Go on my way to East River. I get bagged. I, but you know what I'm saying? It became a part of the game. And that's when I became a Brooklyn nigga for four, for four months. That was my first travel and becoming a Brooklyn nigga for four months. You know what I'm saying? I was in the smells of a long story. Definitely shout out to everybody on Hunter Street. So the whole thing is it's okay to progress. Stop feeling like it's okay to lose money. It's not okay to lose money. If you invest in something and you can sell, sell. If there's a good block, right? Like, for example, you're a hustler from the block. Let's say you got a block, but you don't have a connect. So now me and you talk, go to the tables. Ah, da, 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 da. Why would I want to change what you got going on in your block? If it's working, all right, so all you need, is, all you, allegedly, all you need me to do is hit you with this and we good. Give me my 30% and I'm happy. Exactly. Why change the structure? Why am I going to come here and bring dudes that's not from this block over here? It's going to cause animosity. I got to bring my man to get some money and put them in certain positions, but I can't have somebody replace you as the face of the block because it's going to cause beef. Yeah? Dudes ain't from here. So there's going to be dudes that's in your projects that don't even get money that's going to try them. So we're going to keep the peace. That's what business is about. So why lose? I seen dudes do the funniest thing in the in the hustling game. I seen niggas allegedly a nigga have a brick worth of garbage. <laughs> or something he can't get rid of. He started making phone calls himself. Yo, I know you out of town. I got you for, for the low. What? Because was garbage in New York, a fly out of town. So dudes is like, what bet? I'm on my way. Dudes is flying from Buffalo or wherever he was at to New York. Yo, what's going on? Great. This is when Greyhound was crazy. Shout out to Greyhound Bus, man. Trailways and all that. 42nd Street, Gate 60. Oh, man. Y'all playing game. You up that train, hop on that hop on that west side line, go straight uptown. Come on, man. Salute to the chat, man. That's the ever, though, that we come from. Then it ever change. But the thought pattern should not change. So now that I told you, we have to, we have to, we have to navigate the, the, what's reality. You know what I'm saying? We have, we, have, we, have, we have to go to reality. What dudes want to lose? 
When dudes took a loss, they found somebody else to dump that garbage on. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell my man, Tony, she was sick. I got... Actually, he did, allegedly, he messed up the package. He did that. But he had to get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> got to teach a lot. You know what I'm saying? And he got rid of it. He got his money back. He ain't making profit. He ain't get all his money back, but he got it just enough to recoup. Okay, I'm going to take that loss. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to take it because I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> That whole era of keeping it real is... But y'all think... Y'all listen to too many NWA albums. you so listen to too many of that. Real niggas and da, 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 da. And listen to way too much of that. Let's do what Calvin Butts did, right? The guy that the guy that y'all seen in Jim Jones' video, G's up, hoes down, right? Y'all look at... Oh, you got the Reverend in there. No, the, the Reverend's a landlord. <laughs> he owned that building, the Pathmark building, 125th Street. We see all the K2 heads at. Allegedly... A bunch of homies, you know what I'm saying? But a bunch of K2 heads. They sold that building to build a high riser. He made, he owned mad property in Harlem, bro. Even though some people say he's a slumlord, but Jim Jones had him in the rap video. The only thing, like, the only thing people seen out of that was, yo, they got the Reverend, yo, Harlem in the building. This guy owned real estate. How, how does he be a part of a group that owned the property, that owned Pathmark property on 125th? Now they building a high rise. I guess it might even be up right now. People about to pay a million dollars to look at K2 heads across the street. Shout out to the chat, everybody in it. We in the building, East Harlem, 125. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Think about it. People going to pay all this. The only, the only come up with that building being there is the train stations right there. <laughs> Now they in here. Now, now that's twenty six. Now, now you're the only one commenting. There's people listening. You got, you got, you got twenty six people in here. You good? You good? They watching. They paying attention, bro. Take care of your family. There's nothing wrong with that. You done it. You have an experience in the street, right? You have an experience in the street. You experienced it. You got out. You're still alive. You don't have a million years. And now you can move on. You learn. You have to learn something in the game, man. You never take losses. You gotta learn in the game, man. Oh, they here, they watching. I see the count. They watching. They Jim Jones and they they paying attention. You can't lose. You just try again, another angle. There's nothing wrong with getting a job. A nine to five will keep you from a tender life. Shout out to my man Miami Moon, man. The whole bed style, but definitely passing Jackie Robinson. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of times we get mixed up in race, we get mixed, we get mixed up in style. Honestly, to be racist, though, to be honest with you, racism has become trendy. So now it's like to say something racist is just a trendy thing. Now I can be like, oh, he's racist because he didn't want to sell me a hat. We got to know how to bob and weed that. You know what I'm saying we have to understand that there's a the bigger picture to everything. And sometimes we do got to fall back and, and, and study and understand other people. You know what I'm saying? The penitentiary, all it did was bring us back to. You break the holds when you stop hanging out with what you're used to hanging out with, changing your conversation. The penitentiary has a hold where the only people you feel comfortable around is other jail cats. And that's what you see when you, why he came home with them cats for? Yeah, nine to five, man, pay taxes. If you, don't, if, you, if you can't own a business, why not pay taxes? Why not have a 401k pay? Why not buy stock? Why not do all the things that when you get 70 years old, you won't be sitting around scratching your head, pushing carts for a supermarket? Like, damn, I should have did that shit 20 years ago. Where you can be pushing carts for a supermarket, but you own your co-op. And all this is all profit. And this is all exercise to you compared to, I need to do this to survive. It's a difference in the ball game. It's a difference in the marketing. You understand what I'm saying? You know, I changed up the show today. You know what I'm be doing. But every shot, go, go, go to Crown TV for the other footage. Um, you know, he got a great thing going over there. I had to change it up because you have to have, a, we, we got to have these conversations. Like I told you, Jim Jones had Calvin Butts in this, in this video, right? The Griffin. People don't even know that this guy's, Owns mad property in Harlem, and he actually owned the, was part of a group 
that own the property that Pathmark on 125 is on. And I, I think, I don't know if they do it, did it already, but they're supposed to be building a high-rise building. And if they build that high-rise building, they're going to be selling apartments and they're going to be 5000 10000 a month. Millions of dollars, and and think about it. When you look out your window, you're gonna see a bunch of K2 heads <laughs> right across the street. McDonald's, called Dolphins running all through Lex Ave. They have not cleaned Lex Ave up when Lex Ave is like, ah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you got dudes that you got co ops on them side blocks. Look at um 119 between first and second, they got a co op over there on that block. That block in '88 was woof. That block in 86 was crazy, 119th and all that, man. Between 1st and 2nd Avenue. It's dope, man. You know what I'm saying? We're giving you... If we ain't learning that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Calvin Butts got, is going to get a piece of that dollar. and they gonna, Because that's what Taino Towers was supposed to be. But gentrification wasn't ready for that back then. So that's why the people, you know what I'm saying? Remember, Channel Towers, when they built that, whew, shout out to Bob Lemon, free Bob Lemon, you know what I'm saying? Free Boy George. I remember when, when running through there when I was like eight years old, there was always been a thousand dope fiends over there. I never I never seen Tano Towers without no drug addicts over there. This is not a lie. I never, I never seen Tano clean. But that's one of the first flooded, like that whole Second Avenue corridor from like 118th and down, always been Liddy, them side blocks. Liddy, Lumi D block and all that. All them blocks been Liddy. Shout out to Double Law, Jeep Older Pro, Wagner Projects. You know what I'm saying? Everybody went to Junior High School 45 and 86. You know what I'm saying? Junior High School 13, 99, Junior High School Wagner. You know what I'm saying? You hear man? I like shouting my hood out because that's where I'm from. And I just show my appreciation to those. You know what I'm saying? I, I just show my appreciation, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and I know that my videos are getting views. And I don't oh, yeah. And they, oh, that's East Harlem. But you understand where the thinking came from. We wasn't going to war. I'm going to be honest with you. My man used to laugh. My man laughed at me and said, Zeke, if he wasn't going to war on the drug ever when it came to all of us, then he joined a gang. He got all the beef in the world. That's crazy, son. And, and he deals with no money. You got to step away from that, bro. Think about it. All the money, all the reasons I had beef in the world was over the block. He wasn't people with a hundred street. He wasn't people with Carver. He wasn't people with Walsh. He wasn't people with... Now, let me tell you something. Isaacs back then was still Budweiser crew. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? It's zombie land still. Exactly. He got your one. They want you to pay 5000 a month because it's Harlem. And it's right by the highway, the FDR. And it's right by the subway station. They go... Forget what outside the neighborhood look like. It's the convenience to get the work. And I ain't gonna lie to you, it is. But it, but it is, definitely salute. But it is a convenience to get the work. You know why it's convenience to get the work? Because the train station's right there. So with all those that work downtown, it's happening to train and go. But now because of COVID, there's a lot of these offices are doing work at home. But they was doing that before COVID. But now there's more workers at home doing that digital thing. So now, okay, I can live here. I ain't got to go outside. It's a win. I live in Harlem. They don't even gentrify Harlem. They didn't gentrify that side yet. But only thing that's over there, and I should have caught it, they had the um, Scientology. The Scientology, the thing that um, the Cruise guys are part of, Tom Cruise. The Scientology. They got that on 125th between, right, 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 right by um, 2nd Avenue. So they, they got that for a group of people that we don't see. You know, deal with science, Scientology, it's a lot of money involved with that. Anybody that's really into that, it's about some bread. You know what I'm saying? Not going to say everybody, but majority of that. You know what I'm saying? But that's on the 125th. So that's it's fitting into what the geographics of the community is going to be. But for them to make that happen, they're going to have to sweep up all them dolphins and move them to a whole other side of town. You know what I'm saying? So is chatting everybody in it. Yeah, it's been gentrified. Definitely the West Side. <laughs> Definitely Brooklyn, Stuyvesant. So that, so what I'm saying is exactly. We have to start getting... getting so, so we got to get in the right circles. It's all right. Get your credit right. Once you get your credit right, you can start talking business with you. Yo, listen, man. 
Let's try to put together a group. Let's go buy a half a neighborhood. People always need some place to live, man. Let's try to create, let's get insurances. No more cutting corners. No more, yo, I'm open up a business and, and I got nah, Just do it right. Get, get, get the DOTs, get the licenses, get all of that. Invest. And just, you just gotta grind. Nowadays with the internet, now how easy it is? Do you know how easy it is with the internet? Now how easy it is with the internet? You got this door dash, they killing them. You tell me, none of us could've did that? I thought about that the other day with wife. I said, that's crazy. That's something that we could've did. Imagine having a contract with a supermarket like you. Anybody that goes grocery shopping, I have a contract with Charlie. All, 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 all I need is DOT insurance. Insurance got people in the van, and I could actually, when they go food shopping, I could drop them. I could actually drop their groceries off at home. Yes, exactly. Those are the conversations. Exactly. You've got it good. They just don't know it. They just don't know it. The new thing now is some cars. Listen, in New York, we, we see, see in New York City, we see fresh direct trucks. But then there, you got some dudes that own their own trucks that subcontract this fresh direct. But you got to get the insurances. A lot of dudes be like, I, I, like if we could spend, if we could waste 10000 on a car, why not spend 5000 on a truck, spend the rest on the DOT licenses and those other stuff, get a good, or whatever, get a truck. Get, that's why it's good to have good credit. Good credit can get you... Boom, get a truck, get the DOT, get it, get it laced, get it tagged, and you start making your business moves. Because a lot of companies don't want to pay insurance. They don't want to pay 401k. So you so you can actually sit down and negotiate with somebody and, and come up with a, a, a letter, and then who knows? You might be running a route. That route might make you two, three million dollars a year, five hundred thousand a year. But you did, but you gotta pay for your own insurance, which why not? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You could go and just get insurance. You know what I'm saying? You, you have a mechanic on deck that fix trucks, that's, that knows what they're doing and not trying to get over. You maintain your property. This is how you get money. Yo, I found out something I was in New York, man, and it's just something to think about. This guy was telling me a story how he got a bunch of budget trucks in a lot. So the, the, the Jewish guy... His father owned. He's like, yeah, my father owned a car rental spot, but now he does the. Um, he got the budget truck, so I'm kicking him one day. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I mean when you talk to somebody who owned a business. He was actually the boss that was running it, because I had the moving company. He said, oh, you got the moving muscle movers. Oh, that's me and my part. Oh yeah, I, I follow. He was following me on um, following us on IG. So now, as we're talking, he's telling me how like how they did. It. He said, yo, we just get me this minute lots. We run a lot, we get certain licenses, da, da, da. we went to budget and budget, they give us the trucks and we just basically, we're just the legs. He didn't tell me everything else, but just him and that is like, so all you need for budget is a location, a little bit of a lot where they can park their trucks at, and it's a go. They, they do everything else. They give you the computers, they give you the line lines, and they give you the, the, the they do everything else. They send you the reservations and you deal with the walk-ins. It may sound easy, but... The insurances is probably, you know what I'm saying? If you deal with them, they probably tell you how to do the insurance. If a truck break down, where to take the trucks to. But just hearing this is like, yo, that's why you see mad little auto spots with U-Hauls. Because it's money. That's extra bread. A lot of, them, a lot of those franchises sub subcontract, but you got to have land for these trucks to park at. And you'll always be strategic. Like, I'm gonna front the budget that's in the Bronx or for Gun Hill Road is, is a winner. Why? He's by the highway, he's by 95, right? That's the one. He owns like five of them. He owns one there. He owns the budget that's in, in uh, Empire Rental on um, Pennsylvania Avenue. He owns Empire, it's Empire and Budget, but it's really Empire. He owns the one that's in Queens by Bayside. He owns like six spots. Woodside, when you, Empire Rental is owned by this guy. But he also do the subcontractor with budget. He's killing them, bro. This guy, I'm older than him. I'm 47. He probably 41. But he put me up on a little bit of game. Connie, how you got all that? Nah, my pops had the car on the spot. And then boom. And this is the Gun Hill Road. That's in the Bronx. You know, from our Gun Hill Road. Way, right, right, right by the um the, the Spanish restaurant. He told me, just get land. One spot, he's, he has a trailer, a little trailer with a bathroom in it, 
and nothing but a lot. He has a bunch of budget trucks. And people in that Woodside area or Long Island City, they rent trucks from him. Smart guy, man. Business. So, so if I ever bought land in the, in the city area where I know that people are moving strategically, that, that, that's a smart thing to do. And he has land in the spots where people like East Gun, who want to buy land by, you know what I'm saying? He, that buzz I'm talking about, about is right by that, that Spanish restaurant on Gun Hill Road. Not the other, not, not the, not the two train Gun Hill Road. Or three train going to hold. We're talking about we're talking about the gun hill road by the five train. When you walk by Gunther all the way down, that budget. That guy's making lots of money. Cause there's a lot of business over there and it's right by the highway. I, I realize location plays key to everything. Right by the highway. Right off of nine five. I just hope I just a bug in your ear. If you want to do something, do something that's that people can get to. That's what I'm trying to get you. Some place where people can get to and it's easy for them to move around. Yeah. You can build wherever you want. It's his property. And some of these properties are in no man land. So when you have properties that's in no man land, like East New York or Pennsylvania Avenue, like land costs nothing to buy. So you buy that lot, throw a couple of gates up, boom, trailer. That's he has a trailer there. You you have he have his budget trucks. He has his Empire trucks and he got the car vendors over there. If y'all want to know what company I owned before, I was a co-owner, co-owner of it was um, Mover Muscle Movers. We were on IG, Mover Muscle Movers. Me and my guy from the Bronx, shout out to my man E. You know what I'm saying? Evos, you know what I'm saying? Good dude. I met, check how I met him. This is no lie. I was doing, I was learning the moving industry, right? I was moving for an African guy named Barry. Never mind with Africans, but Barry's the dirty African. <laughs> but I learned a lot from him. So what happened is, Barry, because the moving industry in New York is slow, right? This is since I've been home. So there's no lie. I went on Craigslist looking for work. I didn't want to hit the block. This is no lie. I went on Craigslist and he said something about meet me on 96th Street to pick for a book one test one. I hit him back. He called me. I met him on 96th Street. No, 90, 96th, 94th Street and 1st Avenue. We was picking books up for a company called Housing Works. He had a contract. He had a, 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 a rock with Housing Works. I did good the first day, the second day. The money wasn't great, but I was putting money in my pocket, and I, and I thugged it out. So we're talking. It's, it's highly intelligent, brother. Shout out to my man, Evos, man. He had a, a mobile car wash and all that. You know what I'm saying? I was doing that. I didn't want to hit the block. This is, this is, this is dead ass. It, all this is like 2015. 2016, 2017, I did not want to hit the block. I didn't want to be gang. I felt like I was going back to jail. So I listen, I work all day doing the book one. Then to the point where he fell back and said, Zeke, I want you to control the book one. I don't know how to drive. So I had to find drivers. So this is where I had a bunch of drivers. Like Will, rest in peace. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, a couple other guys. Another guy, one guy that's he has a, a network. He used to drive for me. Uh, another two guys that two guys that's on YouTube used to drive for me. Um, my man Omar used to drive for me. My man Ella G used to drive. I don't know how to drive, but in the mix of all this, he goes, "Let's think outside the box, Zeke. Let's create a moving company. You get the movers, and I do everything else." And he taught me about that business. He invested. He said, "I'm not playing no games." He was investing in Craigslist to get book moves. He was investing in um, the blankets. We was partners. I got the workers. He did the office work. He started investing into Yelp. We have like we really invested into Yelp. Go to Yelp, move a muscle, move a sound view. You see the sound view shit? Oh shit, that's what they talking about. You gonna see a picture with my niece. Some of the pictures got my niece in it. You know what I'm saying? We had a good thing going. We had movers insurance and all that. So we was able to get into them buildings. Doorman buildings with them with with, them, with, the, with those COIs. We did everything legit. It's just that at the very end, before COVID hit, a, a couple of bad situations happened, but a bad situation happened. And this is where, I, in, 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 in the bad situation, 
business. This, this is what I mean about business. Whenever you open a business, you have to be professional when you do your business. You can't play homie ball. You can't be like, yo, I'm going to hire you use my man because people assume that you're supposed to take everything out of business. Now, if we do a move together, of course, I'm partners when I have to pay you to do something. But if you doing a book one for somebody, say you, say you do a job for him and he choose not to pay you, not because... He's trying to play you because he don't mind paying you, but you parked the truck somewhere and he actually stole a thousand dollars worth of materials off the truck. Physically, not our supplies, but off the truck. And the truck company that we was renting the truck from it wasn't budget. It was a truck company that was on um the Bruckner. You know that truck company that's on the Bruckner? Not 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 budget, but the other one. They, 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 they got the budget, the empire, and then you got the one that's further down the Bruckner. You got it's the green trucks. They don't have they don't have the truck insurance that budget has. So now what happened? Me and my partner class, because she's like, I told you I ain't want them driving, da 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 da, and yo, I'm just gonna fall back. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a loss, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's you paying a thousand dollars out your pocket for somebody who just all you have to do is park the truck. So it didn't come between us, but I was in St. Louis already. So I'm like, you know what, man? It's slow, but boom, boom. And then COVID hit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I said, ah, I might as well stay out here. You know what I'm saying? And then that's how I, you see what I'm doing. I got all these jobs and doing what I'm doing. But it was a great experience, man, because you're not in business to lose money. You're not, you're not here to lose money. And one thing about losing money is you're not here to lose trust. Now, what happened, what I mean about trust, trust is everything in business. Like I told you, I can't treat, where I went wrong at is that I started treating business like it was the new block. But I wasn't around my Puerto Ricans. I wasn't around dudes that see things the way I seen things. A lot of these dudes, you know, they got extra, oh, except my man G. G was on money because G really took care of his family with the money. Whenever I paid G, G gave his wife all the bread. A lot of these other dudes, my man, oh, he was doing the same thing too, but... A lot of these dudes, I know I, I, I can't tell what they was doing, but a lot of these dudes, they got the extra curriculums that they got in their life that may not even be drugs, but it takes away from the, prof the, the professionalism and thinking about another day because you're not taking this that serious. Shout out to my man, um, Veli MMB. He used to drive the truck with us too, you know what I'm saying? Tell you about business. So now I know when I open up another business, it's going to be all professional. It's going to be no more homie ball. You want to work, you don't want to work. We fill out applications. We're, 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 we're going to do this process right because we, you just go, yeah, come on, I got you. It doesn't work out that way. And, and, and that's just the models of that story. I had a great run. But listen, see what I just told you? I didn't want to go back to jail. I didn't want to click again. I didn't want to do gang gang and get caught up in a conspiracy. So what did I do? I went on Craigslist about November and got a hit back and got a job. And I wound up doing that for like four or five years. The only thing I didn't have was I didn't have insurance. I didn't have a 401k plan. I didn't have all that. So now that I've rejuvenated myself, I got all this now. I got a 401k. I'm, I'm working on the 401k, but I got the benefits. I got good good benefits. I done got a super raise on the job. Great things is happening. Not, not really a super raise. But great things is happening. I'm telling you from my experience. Did I love it? Yeah, I loved it. I had a great time. But... It could have been better. It could have been more. I could have had it more structured. You know what I'm saying? If I had had a whole other race drive, like a bunch of Russians or Yugoslavians, I'd probably still been in New York. Me and wife would have been in the penthouse somewhere. But it's all right. It's a learning experience. Did I fail? No. Nah, it's just a learning experience. You know what I'm saying? But you, one thing you never do in business, you never lose trust. And trust is everything. Remember that I just told you that trust is everything. People gotta, people gotta, people gotta understand that when you tell somebody, "Yo, I want you to do this route for me," because I trust you, not to mess this route up. This route is my livelihood, but I trust you. You, you proving to me that I can trust you to do this. I don't drive. I don't know how to drive. So anybody I got to drive was really because I, yo, this is real work. I don't know how to drive, but I couldn't trust them to go. You know what? Why don't you get two of y'all and I'll fall back. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, I wasn't at that point with them. Only one person I was able to do that with. You know what I'm saying? My man, my my, my brother-in-law, my cousin-in-law, Fat Will. 
He was a good guy. Even the other Will, he just was different, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Will, Camille, you know what I'm saying? Even my cousin, my cousin tried to school me, man. Like, like, yo, you got to get some guys around me that you can really trust. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to, because even, even, even this, my man I call Attica, Attica, he even told me, man, like, yo, Zeke, man, you got to get dudes around you that you can really trust doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what you do every day. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you go hard, but it's like, you know, these dudes, you got to watch them. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know me, Attica had our issues. When we argued, he made a swung up. What they call them things? A dolly at me a couple of times, one time, because he was going through some words. But I took the message in like, damn, he right, son. Because, I, because I'm not used to confusion. I'm not used to too much thinking. I'm used to, you know, I'm used to mature money. I'm not used to all the back and forth and the bickering and worrying about what he doing. And yo, son, I'm just being a real one. And I'm not used to that. I'm used to everybody focus on money. Let's focus on getting the job done, not scratching that. And let's make sure we, because you're just getting good moves, moving pianos for 10 minutes, getting $800. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Being that one flight. He was getting great moves. One move we did, we got like seven racks in one shot. Bro. You know what I'm saying? So the moves was coming. The Duke was making it happen. It's just that you got to want it. Now realize, the next time I do a business, it can be no wild style shit. Well, I'm just going to hire a bunch of ex-jail niggas or street niggas because I want to be real. I'm going to stay connected with the streets. That's all I seen. I'm going to be connected with the streets, but the streets I was connected with wasn't the streets that I know. But I hired a bunch of Miguel's and Juan's and Tito's, I'd probably still be, me and wifey would still be on, we'd be, we'd be, at, be back at the Empire State Building, but I didn't. So I have to blame myself in that. You know what I'm saying? But that's business, and I got to learn it. Am I still alive? Yeah. Am I free? Yeah. So that four or five years that I decided to, um, do the right thing. Think, look, 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 you had the Bloodhound Brim sweep. You had the Five Nine Brim sweep. You had the Nine Trey sweep. So if I went back to the streets, I'd have got caught up in one of them because I'd have been heavy in the streets. You had the Albany sweeps with Jig of Blood in them. We had the, you know, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, I'm Gucci, you know what I'm saying? So me working two jobs and doing what I have to do to survive, I'm doing great. I live in a penthouse building, beautiful apartment, beautiful wife. I got a dorm, man. I feel like I live I live across the street from what's considered like Central Park. My neighborhood is considered like Park Slope, where I'm at in St. Louis. I'm winning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I'm in a good space. I'm great. Did I lose? Nah, I, I learned from that. And that's why I would tell y'all, if I check, moving muscle movers, boom, you see it. You know what I'm saying? I'm a people in trunk building and all type of stuff. It's an experience. It's life. But one thing I'm going to say I did was I didn't get caught up in the streets. I did my best not to. That's how I met Eros. So for all y'all that didn't know how I met Eros, I didn't grow up with that man. That man just believed in me. You know what I'm saying? He's younger than me, actually. But... I met him on Craigslist looking for work. I'm a hustler, right? Looking for work on Craigslist. Cause I didn't want to go back to the block. I didn't want to go back to jail, man. That four years did it for me. And you know what's so funny? Look what came out of me being free. My daughter graduated high school. My son's about to graduate high school. So daddy being home was a benefit for everybody. My daughter's a sophomore in college. My daughter, my daughter had to see a psychiatrist because she was going through some stressful moments in her high school years because she said I missed my daddy when I was locked up. You no, know, you know what I'm saying? So but me being detached from her because I basically raised her, she had to they had to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? And my daughter had to see a psych. So nobody knows what I have to go, but I went through as a father. I'm still there, but she had to, because she didn't understand why my daddy's in jail, why my daddy's this, why my daddy's going through that. Is it my fault? What did I do wrong? That's what the kids begin to believe when you're in their life. No, it's just nothing that me and your mother separated. That's, you know, but I'm still here. I'm still your daddy. And, and you know what? One of the greatest moments of being a dad, my, my daughter went to trial for the 
basketball team. It's a true story. I'm telling y'all life experiences. This is life experiences. You know what I'm saying? This is this is what I I, I deem as real nigga shit, as y'all say. Already knew. And I'm a real one. And this is that. Well, this is real. My daughter calls me one day, right? She didn't make the basketball team. But she tried so hard in middle school to make the team, but she didn't make the team. Who knows why, but she didn't make it. She's on the school bus. Her mother called me. Your daughter losing her mind. She's crying. She can't stop crying. She's on the bus losing her mind. She's crying. I'm trying to find out where she's at. She's upset. Your peace, peace. Mikey Blow Dollars. I call her, she'll tell your daughter to answer the phone. What's up, man? What's going on? She cried, Dad, Dad, I wanted to make the team. I just want to be happy. It's not about making me happy. Whatever you do make me happy. You in the school band. You in the, you in the school band. You, in the, you doing this. You're doing it on an honor roll. You can't do nothing else to make me happy, but just keep being you. Be happy. I'm, I'm, I don't care what you went to. You got pole, but in drugs, but you good. You know what? And she was like, what, daddy? Stop crying. Stop crying. Stop crying. And she stopped. She slowed down. I said, what other sport are they trying out for right now? She said, soccer. I said, soccer? Soccer dope. I played soccer when I was in school. That was dope. Boom, boom, boom. It's mad people that get mad Spanish. You got mad Irish. Soccer is an international sport. It's called football. It's international. You're going to meet men, men, you're, you're gonna meet many people with different ethnic because soccer is a worldwide sport. She was like, yeah, I was doing my thing. I was El Saco. They used to call me El Saco. It was the El Saco. She was like, what's El Saco? Don't worry about it. I was a Menudo fan. I had to sit there. My man would make balls with the chuletas and rice and some panin and the steak with the sasso. And, and, and I was El Saco. Don't worry about El Saco. But I was just El Saco. You know what I'm saying? Watch Menudo. I wasn't... I had to watch. We can tell somebody more. Mars. Change Telemundo. Like, yo, 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 mama. Change it. I had to sit there and watch it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I had to sit there and watch it. I had to take that in. So. She goes, Daddy, you was El Saco? Shh, don't tell nobody. So what I'm going to do is you try out. <laughs> yeah, El Saco. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? So, try out for the team. And if you make the team, I'm going to buy you some soccer cleats. She was like, yes, Dad. I'm going to ball. I'm going to ball. Yo, I'm at work with a couch on my shoulder. She called me. What's going on? Dad, Dad, I tried out. Dad, Dad, I tried. I think I made the team. I'll find out tomorrow. Boom, she called me. Yo, I made the team, Dad. Congratulations. Mind you, this little girl has asthma. I don't know why I suggested that. For her. So she like, Dad, I'm, I made the team. She had asthma. And she actually played three years playing soccer, man, for Albany High School, man. I saved my daughter. I gave my daughter an option. Our job as a parent is to those moments when he gets stuck on stupid. We can't go where well, my big homie is. And this is why we have to not be online calling people too many big homies and this, that, and third. They got their personal accolades, but we can't, because they see this going, they lost, but we look up to them. That's my big homie, too. We got to stop that. Gotta be, those are things that people got to stop sometimes. That's my man. He good money, but we're going to focus over here. It's the soccer thing. I, 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 I said, damn, that's, that's the power of dad. <laughs> she said, dad, El Saco. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? El Saco. But I didn't have a noodle pin. I didn't have a noodle poster. I didn't have none of that. You know what I'm saying? I was just being dad. You know what I'm saying? Just doing what dad's supposed to do. And this is a little girl that's 150 miles, that was 150 miles away from me. And that's and that's how we do it, B. We ain't gotta be there physically, because you no, know, when they when, when they leave the nest, we gotta be there for the yo, what? What happened? <laughs> What's going on? We can't be stuck on super like, but my life is in shambles, so I can't, I, 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 there's nothing I could do for you. It's not about what I could do for you. I got to keep you on point. Take that. Focus on that. Focus on the win. I'm telling you real shit. This is real shit. How many people will sit here? I'm telling you something because some of your kids might need psychiatric help. There's nothing soft. There's nothing whack about that. 
A crazy person never going to tell you they crazy. A stressed out person never going to tell you they stressed out. You take them kids to that, and you go, yo, let me let me figure this out. Because some, there's some things they're just not going to tell us. They're not going to tell an outsider. There's nothing bad. I'm not going to tell it's like psychiatrist and anybody else. El, let me see, hashtag El Saco. I was the best. Do, 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 do. I said, I, my moves was like this. El Saco. <laughs> you know oh, Sockles in the building. Da -da 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 -da. This, I ain't gonna that's my hairline was like this. My hairline was like this, bro. My, my hairline was like this. I started running with the Puerto Ricans, putting the S kill shit with the, with that cheap gel. My, all my friends had DAs. I had to have a curl, so I could find a curl. Got my shit this far. Look, look, that cheap. Don't, don't, don't use that. With my hairline now, that shit was like this. I got way ahead of my head now for the rest of my life. It's going back when they call me Willie Wayback. My man says, Zeke, you remind me of Willie Wayback. No, I'm not doing this like this, bro. Remember, listen to you about that dollar pun. Killed me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, the running man. I'm telling you, we asked some niggas. Zeke was just uh, turning it up. The running man got me snuffed a couple of times because the niggas are. That's what they knew me from. You got some gabs. The running man got, oh. I swear to you, can't make this up. That's the running man guy. Yo, boy, you know what I'm saying? That's the one like, why? I get caught up balance for it. I'm always getting caught on the side block with these niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? But with that being said, man, I hope I made your morning, man. I hope you got some information out of this. I got a couple of more videos pumping up today. Hope you appreciate it, man. Just got some knowledge born and understand it. We do this for the people, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, we all grew up, we have experiences, man. A nine to five is better than a ten to life any day. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, that's my move. Whew. I was killing them, man. It's like 131, 131. And shout out to my man. He said, like, they like, they must say they didn't make a graffiti thing. You know, the, we PT 131, rest in peace, Razo. Shout out to my man Uno and Troll and all of them. You know what I'm saying? Names like that, Troll, Wigs and all that. Those are some names. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man Wiggy and all that. You know what I'm saying? Debbie salute, salute. There's nothing wrong with keeping it funky. You know what I'm saying? Debbie salute to, to wifey Southern Bell. You know what I'm saying? Southern Bell. Westside St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? My man Chopper City from Foch. You know what I'm saying? Grandma I love. My man Spawn G and all. Rest in peace, Shop T T W B. Salute to my man Hard T W B. Fury T W B. G T W B. Cancer T W B. Scar T W B. JGTWB, the Washington boys. I was actually down with them. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? I see you tonight, man. Salute, salute, salute. W 100 Street, man. We in the building, man. Nothing but love. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man, JE Moneybags. Get in tune with him, man. JE Moneybags. JE Money196. Y'all can find him on um, IG. You got the real estate, good dude, BX196 and Marion. Get in tune with my man, um, AK. The homie official AK, Mafia AK. Y'all gotta find that, Google that. I was on Reflex Radio, download the app. It's a, it's a dope network they got going on, man. It's for the people, man. People need to, this information, man. With that being said, man, you know, we, we here. It's 70 degrees outside. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy this day, enjoy the kids, man. Go get some number. It's still cold in New York, but the Piragua, get, 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 get. Go, go see the Piragua man and all that, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And he got time, and you, you cook with some rice and beans and all that, throw some head to the on, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's our visual trap music. With that being said, man, shout out to my man Sonny Ramondi, Sprink, Sprinkle Spraggle, 115th Street in Park, at the La Maqueta, she owns a um, bakery. That's family right there. That's my man Cuzzo anyway, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Superman. Spring. Sprinkle, sp sprinkle, sparkle. You know what I'm talking about from the east side. East Harlem, 115. Tell them to Zeke Black sent you. My man Sonny got the green oak apparel. Sonny with Monday for ill design shirts. Go to his IG. Support. East Harlem support East Harlem, man. I'm going to tell you something. I went to an event for her at the, at the La Marqueta on 15th Street. And that lady, Melissa, whatever her name is, with the V, she was like the councilwoman. She pulled up. Oh, she pulled up to her joint, man. So definitely Puerto Ricans support Puerto Ricans, man. So we need to all support each other, man. You know what I'm saying? Debbie shout out to everything in Chelsea, Fulton Projects. You know what I'm saying? 
Shout out to my 357 crew. You know, D, that's my guy. You know what I'm saying? That's the guy. It's the dev, CM. Be here. Streets is here. Streets is here. How do you mess say? Get at me, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be killed. Get at me, dog. Remember, we had Jackson Ho. We had Jackson Ho. Y'all had Willie Burgers. We had Jackson Ho. We had Jackson Ho. Y'all know what Jackson Ho is. We had the steakhouse. With that being said, man, salute. Good morning. Me, me. I gotta go to work, though, at 2 o'clock. I appreciate y'all. One love, party people.